Utilize those coupon codes and do not forget about the easy to use sponsor sponsor quest on the right hand side as well, where you can definitely contribute to your heart's high heart desire. We already have 130 plus people in here tonight. Everybody contributed tonight, contribute to that pot. We will be right along our way. So let's get it going here. TNS is Rome himself facing off against Thrash Boy right here, round one. Yeah, right now it's just a little bit of nickel and diamond. Crash Boy is able to find a clean hit though here with Luong, putting Rome into the corner. Is Andy though? Andy does have access to a decent DP, and we do have a bar for a guard cancel, but instead we are gonna get blown up by that standing CD into the level one. Yeah, legacy long Luong. Luong a character that has stood the test of time for sure. Great, receive some buffs, you know, like a little further into uh, KOS life. A character that honestly just kind of slipped under the radar for quite some time, right? But forever dangerous, always coming around there with those long limbs, right? Checking you and uh, checking those ranges. But speaking of big long limbs, absolutely, Mr. Ralph coming in. And Luong, of course, just recently nerfed. Ralph did get nerfed a long time ago, but hey, you can nerf the man's range, but you cannot nerf his damage. Look at that. Nearly taking Luong down in one confirm. Trying to go for the charge punch there. Not quite going to hit. But what a clean jump in there with the JA. Oh, yeah, absolutely here. But Rome getting that healthy life lead there. Building a lot of real estate for himself, right? So all he needs is just one clean hit. Thrash Boy doing a great job of preventing that from happening, but no meter to finish the kill. Oh, dropped right on your dome there. And that's going to be the end of Luong. Now Rome getting a little bit of health back here for Ralph, but still is down on the back foot here. Now you have to go up against a character that is definitely way better, not even arguably, 100% way stronger, and has better range than her in this version of the game as Trix D comes through with the Tier 1 sub. Thank you so much for the support. Oh, yeah, and just like you said, right, it is Geese's world right now. And we're all just trying to survive in it. Right now, Rome is doing his best to survive, throwing out everything but the kitchen sink and might need that, too. Oh, yeah, what a beautiful instant air. Nice, that 2C able to stuff the Shatter Strike attempt. Rome's going to have to stay as close as possible, but instead, unfortunately, Turn Punch is blocked, and Geese is going to take down Ralph. We are down to Benny Maru here, but this is still doable. All right, we have a challenge there in the chat. Someone claiming to, da to donate $10 for every round Rome wins. All right, I mean, hey, that's one round, right? You got a round down. Well, we're trying to determine if they mean rounds like characters oh. or rounds like games. So we'll, we'll see what happens here as the timeline unfolds. But right here, Rome getting a nice setup here with the jump D, but no dice. All right, tries to go for the empty low this time. Just needs to be a little patient here. I know it can be scary against Geese. Geese is so good at playing that in and out game. Just difficult to catch in some cases. But now has the corner pressure. Let's see, gets the jump in. Counter hit confirmed. Tries to go for the run of command ground, but it's called out and Thrash Boy is gonna take game number one. Yeah, and if you were seeing there, you know, Thrash Boy just never really gave Rome a chance to get a clean hit. Was constantly on the move in those last few sequences, right? Whether it be get up backdash, get up roll, wait, and then jump, right? Just knowing that eventually Rome was going to look for that command grab, right? And all they needed was just that one opportunity to get out of the way and blow up the spot. And that was textbook, textbook defense, that defensive options there by Thrash Boy. Yeah, very well said. And I feel like Rome also was, was not able to stay in the ranges that his characters are most effective at, right? Of course, Ralph kind of wants to either be at the tip of the 2C range or he wants to be up close and personal. And unfortunately, Andy really wasn't able to get much done at all. Now, doing what Andy does best, slowing things down with that strong fireball of him. Another character that's really good at going in and out. Yeah, and I'm loving these adaptations from Ro right now. That's right, Ro. You better fight back. You better get some. Already over half health gone. Corner confirm it to the super. Much better start here for Rome now. Gets the wake up throw. Thrash Boy is just a little too greedy on that pressure. Tries to challenge. Any stray hit's gonna do it. Come on, Rome, you got it. I told y'all, I'm, I'm look. You 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 get the the other half after this game is over. All right, you 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 get the rest once we cleared this match. Right now, it's about it's about the Rome show. Okay. Look, Rome's, Rome's way more patient than me, all right? I definitely want to DP there in the corner. I would just let that Hail Mary rip. But Thrash Boy going for the double hop. Gets the confirm. Just uses the palm to close the distance a little bit. Doesn't try to go for the OTG. 
clean jump in. Yeah, Thrash Boy is talking, just cranking out that stand D, occupying that space that he knows, you know, Rome wants to be in, right? So got a lot of, you know, a lot of mileage out of that. Doing a lot just to, uh, you know, get Andy to be contained at that point. But now, can't really get away with the, too many of those shenanigans at that point. Oh, there we go. Quick Mac confirm. Just trying to squeeze out some extra damage there to get a huge lead over Ralph. But Rome can do the same thing. We've seen the damage that Ralph can put out. Just needs to find that one straight hit, whether it be a standing D or a 2C. That is not what is going to happen here. It is now up to Benny Maru here for Rome to stay in the winner's side. All right, but again, you know, the Benny Maru factor can work. We've seen it time and time again. This character does get down. Try to get low again, an empty jump low, no dice. Sick of the on that. Again, I see Thrash probably really likes to end every confirm with that level one fireball, right? Uh, no matter how much meter we have, just to squeeze out that extra damage and create that space. Here we go, Trey with the CD, gets the EX Slicer. Come on, Rome, I believe. I mean, this is doable, he's got plenty of meter here, he's able to find the command grab. Oh, another roll. Yeah, he tried to get that cross up in the corner, has to spend one of those bars defensively. And oh just my one. gosh, wow. where are you going? No way. Gets caught again by the legs, and there's the jump in, and Rome is going to be set down to lose his bracket early on. TNS, Rome, that's all right. Still got a job, Rome, I promise. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Right on top of that, good, lots of character variety going on. Geese being oh, yeah. the common factor. <laughs> yeah, you know, the goose is loose, so to speak, right? But, again, you know, there has been a healthy amount of character variety, uh, especially in this current meta. And that's something that a lot of fighting games always try to achieve. They always try to make this, you know, environment where everybody can play the character that they can and have a fun and good time being able to do so and being able to achieve a viable level of success when competing in these environments. So we're already getting started early. Classic Yashiro stuff, right? Getting the, the party started with the uh, the heart move down. Yep. Oh, uh, another overhead. This. Let me tell you, you said people be able to play characters and have fun with them, right? Yori players are always having fun. This character is obnoxious. Trying to create a little bit of space. That's going to be key in this matchup, creating that space against Yashiro, trying to force him to overextend and get those punishes. Yeah, but Yashiro, you know, the king of overextension, right? Especially with those strong punches. To see the character, right? So, you know, definitely uh, getting that early lead. But here we go. Ready? Easily one of the uh, biggest winners out of the uh, recent balance patch. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Geese, it was interesting too, because when Geese first dropped, he was kind of underwhelming, but now he is pretty much considered one of the best characters in the game, arguably top five, and you can see why. Has great damage, has incredible range, his pressure is so incredibly safe, and it, it's hard to gauge that distance, right? His 2D is such a good button, his palm is probably one of the best special moves in the game. Is it all right, right here? No, heavy kick was actually going to. Oh my goodness! And catches the whip from downtown. Oh yeah, it gets called the frame trap there. Tries to go for it again. Jump in, but gets tossed. You can see, just trying to find the right opportunity to strike, especially to get that jump in. That's what we're seeing here from Alex, right? Trying right, to wait for New Type to whip something and then get a clean jump in for maximum damage. Yeah, but New Type also showcasing the exceptional level of defense, right? Waiting out the entire sequence and also being ready to check Alex at any given moment. However, Geese, a character that doesn't need much, right? Once they get a couple clean hits with that character, you know, he is very much capable of cranking out the damage. Very much like we saw with uh, Ralph earlier, right? Just one of those meter dump style special. Yeah, you can carry it there. Him, honestly, any position here. But Kukri coming in on the anchor position. I feel like that's where Kukri really excels because it gives him a lot of meter to play with those setups, right? Especially with the EX clones for really solid Oki. But what a clean jump in there over the fireball. Have you in the corner, not a lot of meter, but we can still ditch out the damage. 
Alex is just cranking out as much damage as possible, right? Just dumping the meter because at this point, I already have a character to, to spare. So why not, you know, essentially try to uh, get the job done when I can, right? And, and it pays off because I've already established so much real estate for myself. So now I can really turn up the heat. I can really apply that pressure to essentially push you off your last leg. So good stuff there to Alex Mazi. Yeah, I mean, uh, really good just uh, awareness and callouts, right? Recognized how much new type one to rely on those fireballs. We got knocked back and we just bunny hopped. Bunny hopped forward to get the punish there over the fireballs. Very great awareness, very great reactions there from Alex. And now only has to close out one more game here to send new type to losers. All right, oh, well, so... Yeah. Uh... Definitely mellow. Uh, he, he, his damage compared to like, yeah, the, the big boys, the big boys like Yasha or here or like Yori, definitely a little lacking, but it's still really solid for how strong he is in neutral. Right? You can have a character be really strong in neutral and have a little bit more lacking damage like we see with some characters like Whip, but uh, Geese is just the perfect all rounder. All right, here we go here, a little bit of back and forth. You know, like you said before, right, Iori always having fun, always pushing buttons. And for all of Yashido's range and, uh, you know, set play there, Iori is right back at it, right? And rightfully so, because canonically speaking, these characters don't like each other at all. I mean, Iori is literally the reason why Yashido is in the predicament that he's in. So, you know. <laughs> what, dead? <laughs> yeah, you know, just... This is a little snafu. <laughs> oh, beautiful whiff punish there. Able to just blow up new types Yashiro. And now it's down to whip. Yori's still looking pretty healthy. All right, jump in. Goes for the run under and gets the low with the 2B. And now your back is up against the wall. The worst place for whip to be. Oh, and what a catch there. That was a beautiful bait. All right, Alex Mazi looking to close out on set point here. Remember, folks, it is two out of three until finals. Winners and losers finals is where you, uh, losers, winners, and grand finals are where you achieve the promised land. Absolutely, but right now, Alex is trying to clean things up with an OCV here. Going to answer with the DP. Gets the clean jump in, but oh, we delayed our next hit just a little too long. Right, swiped out of disguise. I like the counter poke there with the standing A, but unfortunately we run right into a low from Alex. And things are not looking good, Jackal. Oh, absolutely not. And already Alex Mozzie taking the game set and match. Mexico in victory ultra bit. Good stuff there to Alex Mazi taking a clean 2-0. We've been seeing more and more Rio as the weeks have passed, right? Rio has been slowly rising in stock. Um, you know, same with Hyder, and and which is funny because both of these are strong characters in their own right. And you kind of hit the nail on the head, right? You know, when you can play these characters, you can very easily swap those out with these characters and still profit, but eat, but have more to spare, right? So. We're going to see what happens here as uh, Robert getting a very smooth start with the... Getting a yeah. really good start here. Uh, immediately takes character number one from EB Girl. Yeah, gets the low crush as well there with Benny Maru. And that was a really smart way to start things off, right? You cannot give Orochi Shermi any room to get her game plan started. So just sticking to her light blue with Benny Maru to make sure that you can smother with pressure. But now EB Girl coming in and doing the exact same thing to Robert here with Hydern. Yeah, and again, Hydern is one of the... I don't even know if you could call him a sleeper top tier at this point because, you know, again, he's another winner of the latest meta, right? But, I mean, it's the character, you know, it's still a character that you you do not see often. So how do you even, like, prepare, right? If, if you check the appearance stats, right, for uh, the SNK World Championships, there are only two hiders in the entire bracket. Which is honestly shocking because he is such a strong character and he's represented a ton here in TNS. But Ryo, there is no shortage of Ryo players coming through this character. Yeah, like you said, slowly but surely he's gained prominence. Uh, at the start of the most recent patch, people were riding really high on him. But I don't think, like, it wasn't immediate how strong he was, right? So they kind of dropped off him, but now he's making his comeback. Easy, don't you start, Joe Stuff. 
Yeah, full commitment. He's going to be able to survive there. He gets tossed right back into the corner, and we just go for the short hop overhead. It's going to connect, and Rio is out of here. One Antonov and two dinos. <laughs> Antonov sweet, Dino. baby. Antonov sweet. King of dinosaurs. King of dinosaurs. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. I'll be here all week. All right. But only tonight. <laughs> And there we go. Hydron is down. So we are going to have this anchor battle here with Ash versus Isla. This is uh, EB Girl is in a difficult place, right? Uh, stuck between a rock and a hard place. Has nearly two bars, but that's not really enough to get uh, a Sans Collect that you're going to be satisfied with, right? If we can get to three, this is completely doable. But we still have to find that straight hit, right, to confirm into the Sans Collect. Yeah, it oh looks like uh, Rob, I mean, uh, EB Girl is going to allow a few straight hits to get the meter that they need, right? So. You get what? one chance here, maybe, never mind. In the game of winners and losers, Isla comes out on top. Yeah, you Another know. Another nightmarish, uh, nightmarish uh, sleeper character to take on, right? We were talking uh, a bit, like, throughout the weeks that, you know, KOF's balance is in such a good spot that it's hard to, it's hard to really say that there's a definitive best character in the game, like you see in, in some other fighting games, right? Whether you're talking about um, a Street Fighter or a Guilty Gear or things like that, or even uh, Grand Blue. But I think there's an argument to be made for Isla. I think uh, there's an argument to be made that she is top one or top two for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's one of those conversations that's constantly like rotating, right? And um, I think that, like you said, it just kind of speaks towards the level of balance that KOF has for that very reason. But We're leading we with Shermie on the point this time now. Yeah, Roshi Shermie finally able to get a little bit of work in. And you see, this is the damage that we're talking about into that set play. Her set play is very solid as well. It's just about getting there. She still has those really solid Shermie normals. The guard cancel. Tries to go for a kiss to death. And we're already seeing a change in momentum, right? Uh, you know, EP already, like, having a change of pace by putting O Sherman in the front. And sometimes that just, that's all you really need is just a change of placement. Because it's not that you necessarily the team, but, and that's also the beautiful thing about KOF, right? Is that you can at any point change the matchup because you have these three characters. So having a deeper understanding of the characters that they're playing right, having that comfort, having that level of comfort that allows them to just kind of place them there. Like, already they have set Kyder up in a position to where they can very easily, right there, just close things out. Now you have resources. Now you have a little bit of real estate, right? And this is the thing that Rio kind of struggles with, right? For all of his damage, for all of his uh, mix-ups and safety, his zoning is not the best, you know? He doesn't really have it. You know, he has that, but it doesn't go full screen. And then you have this extremely long-reaching and mobile character that's higher. Yeah, I mean, uh, and that last round was so good for EP Girl, too. Felt comfortable in the first round, was able to slow things down, prevent Benny Marr from steamrolling. And now we have a pretty even matchup here. Of course, with Robert having some, uh, the, the substantial meter advantage, any stray hit against EP Girl is going to hurt real bad here. But it's about finding that hit. And that's what Hydran is so good at avoiding, is what I would say if we didn't just get the 2B. Yeah, EB Girl was taking an interesting strategy there, trying to actually stay mobile against Rio and try to, like, you know, abuse the angles with that jump C. But Robert doing a great job of keeping EP in front, not really giving her, like, not really giving him the opportunity to, to really start the shenanigans. Now, of course, Hyder does have the ability to keep out as well, but that's kind of what you expect them to do. That's kind of what you expect the Hyder player to do. Play the zoning game, constantly crank up the fireballs, and throw out the little disc oh. pain and stuff like that. That was a crazy exchange. Yeah, just a round start CD blowing Ash back. And now look at the meter discrepancy here. EP girl. I mean, it's not just a mountain to climb. You have to climb Everest at this point. Yeah, and at this point, this is exactly where, you know, you start to showcase, like, your knowledge of the character because it, we've all seen the movie, you know, now can we see the, the follow-up, you know, right? Yeah, I don't know if it's Do you have enough material, here, though. Bends the level two, because why the hell not? All right, well, hold on. We have signs of life. Oh, catches the back roll, but no finish. Yeah, he will get the punish on the back roll, though, trying to avoid even pressure once again there with the fireball. But still, the problem here is the amount of health compared to the amount of meter that you have. To make a comeback, Ash 
lives and dies on that meter. And we saw what happened last time. Isla is just so oppressive. Yeah, and you just spent that bar right trying to get something going with the Shatter Strike, but no dice. So now you are you have no reversal. You have to do everything possible to maintain. A spend the girl. again just to squeeze out some damage. But hold up. And to be honest, you know, like, this this is probably the best option at this point because you don't really want to give Robert too much time because then this kind of thing happens. Yeah, you should still be alive. No, there's a pickup afterwards. That's right. With the DP, there it is. And Robert is going to take it 2-0 over EP Girl, Wakey World, sending them down to the loser side of the bracket here. But have no fear. There's First of all, it's a dinosaur. He's a freaking dinosaur. How can you not love this character? How can you not want to play this character? He is a dinosaur taking over, not the world, the galaxy. Come on, man. About to be universal champion here, Come on. but we need to get to that point. First, we have to get through this Yamazaki here with our Iori. Mikey already pushed through the corner. And this team has been so strong for so long. I mean, Lokov has been working on Yamazaki and Geese for it feels like ages now. Run up, button press. There's the poison. Stomp him. No, we're not going to go for the stomp into the dirt. Instead, we wanted the Oki situation there. Makes sense in the mid screen. All right. Very fast. High octane. Iori play here. Almost caught with the Shatter Strike, but whips. There we go. Able to finally take down Iori. And I see new type. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. No, it was in cross talking crap about the, the color. That's the old Joseph Yamazaki color, all right? Also, you shut your mouth. Tzok is dead. We don't we don't we don't speak that name over here. Tzok died a long time ago. He'll be back this year or next year. On God. That would be funny if he actually came in. We got KOD. Garo 2, alright? Garo 2, but he's KOD, like he sticks it out. <laughs> Oh, but there we go. Yamazaki is now put to sleep here by Mainten Kun. Just able to control a lot of that neutral there with the with the pillow, the fireball there. It's a really solid tool. Being able to dash punch behind it is that huge threat, which kind of uh, puts Yamazaki in a situation where he doesn't necessarily want to try to pocket them all the time. Banana Yama is wild. I'm sorry. I just saw that. Because <laughs> now I'm thinking like an older banana, right? When like it loses some of the yellow, like it's... it's Darkened a bit. That's just the old Joseph out there. Aged a bit. Yeah, like you said, the old. <laughs> uh -oh, I was not, now I'm thinking about this yellow ass shirt. <laughs> Everybody's talking about it. I'm trying to focus, but like the, the whole chat was just like, yeah, that color. Oh, that color. And then I see banana. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, okay, it's enough. <sighs> okay, back to the match, y'all. Back to the match. Yeah. Yeah, right on time. And it got a good color. You know, see, people be like the freaking these freaky colors with the dinosaur, which is fine. But no, we're here on business. All right, clean jump in with the JB. Going to get the pick up here after the level one. Oh, yeah. Four bars, though. Literally any touch can immediately spell possible death scenario here for, uh, for Ello. Oh, here we go. Ugh, hard knockdown. Gotta catch him with a shimmy. All right, neutral I need, jump. I need one two C. I need one two C. Just like, uh, uh. I, I was, I couldn't finish the sense. I'm like, I need like a, a, a whatever two C. That kind of was, you know. But I knew what they was going for, right? And that's what I wanted: the two C to catch the normal into the 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 quarter circle four, the the two three six claw confirmed. Because I knew they was looking for it. I wanted it for you, Mikey. I wanted it for you. I saw that. I that's feel the, your pain. I get it. That's the Do tragedy it again. of being a It'll dinosaur work. player, though. You I gotta believe work in you. Hard. That 2C is waiting. Just let it go. It'll work. Now, now we're back here to Iori versus Yamazaki. Right, I have to I have to earn my my KO my KOD commentary, right? I gotta <laughs> I have to control myself during this time. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll, we we let's, let's see if we see him again, right? Mikey might be able to clean things up. The whole goal is you don't even want to get down to dinosaur, right? Dinosaur is waiting in the wings there to be the last resort. But first, you have to get through Lokov's Yamazaki. <laughs> All right, there we go. Gets the pickup straight into the level one for the poison. We're going for EX kicks. 
Not going to be quite enough damage to get the kill, but we're the patience there, waiting for the roll through to get the button press. Yeah, good stuff there, taking things uh, back over for the momentum there. Menton Kuhn didn't really get much shine in the last game. We're going to see what happens here. He was able to take out uh, Yamazaki, but the moment that Benny Maru came in, that was kind of mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah, or, no. me, e. We put Geese on the anchor position now. Oh no! Face the DB. Uh, into Cash the poison. That dead for sure. Take him out to this. All right. Uh, three. Sorry. Pretty much pushing four bars with Dino. Now, to be honest, Dino can very much do this. Like, this matchup is not the worst. It's just a matter of, like, you have to use the armor, right? Like, you, like I feel like Dino's, uh, there we go, yeah. So, first of all, like, he's really good at punishing the, uh, the whip, right? And then, not to mention, I think his Shadow Strike, like his, uh, yeah, that button right there is really good for checking Yamazaki. Snake. Lokoff is just so patient too, right? Understands the risks, knows that Dinosaur isn't gonna be too terrifying in neutral, just to wait for the openings, and there it is. 2-0, knocking Mikey down to the loser's bracket here. Yeah, but I'm happy we got to see Dino in a TNS bracket. And kind of in a bit of a contention in terms a bit of bit in contention in terms of like where they're where they sit in the meta right a lot of people tend to think he's a bit mid-tier you know just right there middle of the road in comparison to his uh kof 13 counterpart because let's let's be honest that's what we were expecting you know everybody was preparing for it we were like oh dear it's yeah, happening no, <laughs> nothing know, here we go. compared to him i think mid-tier is a pretty accurate assessment here for kim but mid-tiers can work really well in this game it just takes a specialist to highlight them and that's what we're seeing here Cofero Onesto coming out pretty strong in this first round here with Kim. Alright, try to do the jump in. Lots of movement going on. Hard call out, but look at my man is just rolling. Yeah, Cofero had a chance there to really make it hurt on that punish, but uh Kula gets away by the skin of their teeth. Oh, what a flip punish from down down. Kill, but chip is gonna be a fact here and look at that the maneuverability the movement here from Coferro. perfect all right good stuff there utilizing that mobility like you said using that uh that flip kick there to navigate the projectiles however you already not necessarily having to rely on that you know and having buttons that can very easily check him for trying to occupy those spaces Oh, oh no! Huge punish there, committed fully to the DP. I wonder if it was a missed input. Maybe you wanted to go for something else. Because now you're so close to losing Kim just for that one mistake. And yes. welcome to the big league, right? TNS, you gotta be careful. Big Mama's rules. Finish your plate. You know, speaking of uh, speaking of Kim and KOF 13, right? Uh, you know. We'll talk about it a little bit later, but we do have some KOF 13 tournaments coming up here for TNS, so make sure to stay tuned. We did just announce that recently. It is going to happen on some coming up Sundays. Yeah, there you go. For those of you that have been uh, keeping track, KOF 13, low match just recently released, giving that net, that good, sweet rollback net code. Breathing uh -oh. new life into the game. A lot of folks talk about how they miss it, how they want it back. Now's your chance. Man, well, cool is gonna want that Iori's life back here. Just getting put into the dirt, dominating round there from Cofero Onesto. And now we're on our anchor character. It's all up to Rio, and if anyone can do it, it is the dragon. Yeah, it's been uh, the night of the Orochi for sure, as we've been watching you know, Iori, Yamazaki, Orochi kids just constantly, you know, just kind of having their way at this point. Alright, good stuff there. Copero. Not really giving uh, too much leeway here. Not really taking too much risk. Understand they don't have to. Talking about this earlier, you know, Rio for all his damage and all his safety does have a bit of a range problem, which Yamazaki can very easily exploit, as you can see right here. Capitalizing as much as possible. Send him to the other side. Where are you going? Oh, look at this patience. We're just running away, right? Force cool to make a mistake. You don't need to overextend. You just have to find a single touch to close this out. There it is. Perfect. The goddess of victory smiles upon the winner. Winner!
Nice to see, nice to see. Don't worry, chat. I'll talk to you a little bit more after this game about the KOF 13 tournaments coming up, all right? Because I saw saw y'all are excited for that. Yeah. Uh, I With will the, just the let you know. Signal, apparently. Yeah, they are going to be happening every Sunday in February. So, mark your calendars. All right, here we go. Copero. Very convincingly taking game number one there. Didn't even get a chance to see the uh, Orochi Chris. So, Kula getting a chance here to uh, make some adjustments. And a beautiful catch there from Copero. All right, trying to keep the pressure on. I love that backwards roll there. Just to just create a little bit of space, you know. Don't want to get too close to Kim, especially when we've seen the great whip punishes coming out from Kofero's Kim. Yeah, but uh, Kula already building up a, a lot of real estate for himself. Having a bar and a half to work with, so a, net, a, a clean confirm can definitely uh, help them seal the, seal the deal on this. There we go. Clicking right on it and gets the confirm! Yeah, they knew a gap was coming, so they they, they tried to uh, respond, but didn't quite crank out the right one there. Got caught. All right, but here we go now. Again, a very healthy Kim going up against Yori. Let's see if we can make it stick. Oh, my goodness. Oh god, level 2 fireworks, that's it. Wrap it up. Happy New Year. Just like that. Again, Kula just taking it. So, it's really interesting to me how maybe it's for that matchup, right? Kim versus Benny Morrow, because Kim does such a good job for Kopero, but the moment that Iori comes out, he just <laughs> can't really hold his own. Now Yamazaki is going to try to pick up some of that weight again. Yeah, and you know, it, it's, it's good that you said that about Iori, right? Because that's kind of what Iori is, right? He's he's a bully that checks other bullies, if you think about it, right? Kim, you know, again, like, the way that they took out the Benny Mara was just constantly, like, maintaining that, that corner pressure. Right? Iori just has such a strong hit for dealing with those kinds of shenanigans. And Yamazaki, you know, is able to take advantage of the fact that they don't really have to play Iori's game, right? As you can see right here, just making things really awkward for Iori. Yeah, Iori, uh, kind of similar to Geese in a sense that, you know, uh, he's got, he, he's a jack of all trades, really strong at basically everything, but he trades a little bit of that range that Geese had instead for absurd levels of damage. And really easy damage, too, if he has the meter, right? Level one, level two fireworks, they both are uh, just an easy way to cash out. Now, cool just has to figure out a way to get in because you see Copero playing super passive once again. Yeah, less than 15 seconds, under 15 seconds on the clock here. So Copero, no worries at all. Not even worried about getting much health back, right? Because they already have the character lead. They have a good enough health lead, right? Even with Rio again, right? You saw last game that Copero has no problem doing the lame stuff. Just sitting back, forcing Kula to figure out an opening, right? Not really taking much risk. Risk? Oh, but wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, Coolest chance. Does lead to the jungle anywhere. Fends the meter. And spends the level one after to make sure that we put Yamazaki away. And just like that, Kula's going to get full health back to Ryo now going into this anchor war. And it's Orochi Chris. This is another character just like Ryo who can dish out absurd levels of damage for very little meter. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So Kula immediately taking advantage of that. And I completely agree with that choice of uh, uh, meter usage there. This is Big Mama's house. However... <laughs> following that, you know, following that, we see Copero immediately cashing out, doing 70%. Mind you, off of a Shatter Strike, which normally scales your combos pretty heavily. Yeah, but Orochi Chris has always had that super heavy damage since release, right? So, uh, good stuff there from Copero. Cleaning up the game set and match there with Orochi Chris. All it takes is one. Still there. Mr. Karate is waiting for you right around the corner. Absolutely. Just chilling, you know, so get get in there, folks. Round one. And right, right now, we're going to get into this next match here. We got some Yuri on the screen. Took the words right out of my mouth. Yuri, such an explosive character. Another one of those specialists, and it's El Dagor coming through with Yuri. 
Yeah, I know, uh, you know, wherever Yurikov is chilling at right now, I know there's a huge smile on his face. He has seen all three of his characters tonight. He got the Yuri, the Luong, and the Mating Kun. Of course, there's nobody going to do it like him, but, you know, of course, you're seeing a lot of the craziness right now that is Yuri, like you said, explosiveness. There was two mix-ups there before even uh, getting a chance to strike. Yeah, but unfortunately is going to fall pretty early on here to Iori. 37 seconds left on the clock means that we're going to get a nice little health bump for Kane going into this next round. All right, here we go here. Rock Hauer, you know, loosening up the sleeves a little bit. Time to get going. Rock still a really solid character, all things considered, after the last nerf. And Kersey, cool, coming through with the $20 to the match arena. Thank you so much for the support. And y'all make sure to claim those codes as well. Eldorora trying to claim this round here. Easily uh, getting a nice healthy, uh, healthy here. The rock. All right, getting that uh, conversion into the KO. We are one character apiece. Already evening things up, folks. We have been having classic matchup at the classic matches tonight. So again, appreciate everybody showing out tonight. Over 500 already. We haven't even made it out to top, the top 24. So please, folks, continue to share, share, and talk about the stream. Let everybody know that we are here once again. And then, of course, make sure that you are hitting that matcherino. Exclamation point match arena utilize the coupon code and the sponsor quest y'all the sponsor quest actually give you the chance to donate more than what the call the coupon code offers so definitely check those out but all right on hell trying to put the pressure up interesting that see kane running on hell on the second position here she's one of those what almost feels like a dedicated point character in this game just because she's so good at bullying opponents who don't have meter there's the shatter strike the big boot what can we get done and you know, you kind of see that maybe this is why they played him at the second position, right? Because on hell for, you know, as uh, strong as she can be at the point point position when the other character doesn't really have many resources to work with, she's also a character that can kind of become more dangerous when she has those resources of her own, right? So now putting her in a position where she was able to utilize that meter, being able to uh, quickly clear out the rock there. All right, there we go. Just the EX, very nice stuff. All right, here we go, folks. It is Anchor versus Anchor. Kukri facing off against Eordi. Kane right now working off a bar and a half. Eordi looking to build that third one. Kukri gonna be able to get a little bit of set play here. Tries to go for the reset. Teleports back to create space and gets the punish that we were looking for. Here we go, Kane already in a beautiful spot right now. Yeah, level one, just enough to get the kill, and there we go. Kane taking game number one. Hard fought match, but at the end, Kukri was able to just absolutely roll over in a landslide. Yeah, that was good stuff there. And like you say, a hard fought right. Definitely not a not a uh, rollover situation for either player, so. It's going to be real curious to see just what kind of adjustments El Dogoro will make. Again, because these are all quality, high-level players, you know, championship-level players. Uh, El Dogoro, no stranger to to uh, many a top eight, right? So, let's see what happens here. Sticking it out with the Yuri. All right, out of the corner. All right, an upper of uh of their own. All right, neutral jump does get caught though. A lot of back and forth right now. El Demore waiting patiently. Nice catch there with the fireball. Oh no, no full conversion on the whip punish there, but gets another shot. Yeah, tries to go for the reset Dirty. there. Oh, that pressure. was such a good. That was such a good setup there from from. That was my first time seeing a setup like that from Yuri. Your, normally they go for the dive kick, right? Not the fireball. Oh. Really, but there it goes. Speaking of fireball, if you commit to the fireball a little too much, you're gonna get blown up just like that. Great capitalization. 
from Kane. And now we have the lead here. Up a character going into Rock. The Rock can easily even this up with one solid touch. Even a 2B will be enough to do it. No interrupts there. And I'm loving this, uh, these reactions from both players, right? Both players have been making some beautiful plays, some beautiful counterplays to, to each other. Uh, pressure here like again seeing Kane earlier like hopping over that projectile with the with the nice read utilizing the meter and then Dogor uh seeing the gaps in the Yori's pressure and uh utilizing it to short hop over to regain spacing it's been some real quality uh real quality fundamental stuff to watch for sure yeah folks we told you we had treats for everyone all night Right, hop back, create a little bit of space again. Oh, that could have been a huge conversion. We were just too far away and weren't ready for it. Oh, we get some conversion there into the side switch. Try to get a little greedy there. Oh, empty jump low, and that is looking like a positive dead character. Angel not really doing the most damage. However, catches out for sure. Want to guarantee it. That stuff there from Kane. Again, Big Mama's house, Big Mama's rules. Always finish your plate, baby. <laughs> Let's see if we can finish up Iori now. Iori with four and a half bars. He's nearly sitting in a full stick of butter. That was good stuff there. Using the uh, blowback there, the empty cancel. There's the throw tech. Trying to hop on in and create some more pressure. Look at this, just relentless. Doesn't matter what button we need to press, we're sticking limbs out to make sure that Kane is always blocking. Oh, trying to navigate the uh, obstacle course there, but Dogor capitalizing with the throw there and sitting on a nice, nice meter lead. So this is gonna be real interesting here. It's pretty much Dogor's game at this point. Oh, good catch. Oh, gets another one. We're going to go for a ride. Oh, no! but we missed the pickup after the level two. That could have been so much more damage on the table. I mean, it's fine, right? If we get one more hit, we can actually kill. Right, like, yeah, it's okay. I didn't take 80%. I just took 65. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, but there's the set play. Just runs up, goes for the honest mid. Oh. There it is! Oh, beautiful quick max confirmed there, and that is going to be a dead character. And now we have our first game three of the night here on stream. Kane versus El Degor. And that's because we're getting deeper into that bracket. The competition is rising. Oh, yeah, it's getting real dangerous, Jobber. And it's not even top 24 yet. That is the craziest thing about all this. How many players in that bracket? 62? 68. 68. 68 players, y'all. 68 beautiful KOFers. And y'all have been showing up every week to check us out. Again, thank you to everyone who has been coming through and supporting these streams. Without, the, without you, there is no us. So thank you once again. Let's get back into it. Look, let's see. Yuri, once again, trying to put the pressure on. Uh, Elder Gore's Yuri has been cooking pretty well, but it's just unable to close out those rounds. You know what I mean? That's kind of been the difficult part. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh... You know, it's one of those things where it's like, it's, it's just an unfortunate series of events, right? Because, you know, Dogor's uh, Yuri, for sure, has like shown us something. Like, there's been a lot of good things to say about it, but like I just said, right? Kane, once they get that read, like once they get a feel for the, the for what you want, right, with the with the Yuri, then as you can see already, like, knowing when to, to check the, the, the mix up situations there, like they got hit. And did DP, right? Like that that that's a read. <laughs> you know, so again, like just kinda having your finger on the pulse in that moment and and then the next time, like it, it, there's not really much you can do because again, you know, Dogor is trying. The, the fact that we're at a game three here showcases that Dogor is absolutely matching what Kane is giving, but Kane is just always right back at it. <laughs> yeah, well here we go. The Gore is the one right back at it here, tying things up. In the middle war, it's gonna be on hell up against Rock again. Pretty even when it comes to meter on top of that. 
trying to keep things evenly paced. I think Rock does pretty well in this match, especially when he's got the meter to spare. Goes for the empty jump low. Not going to quite work out, but we're still trying to hold on to that corner. And there we go. Kane escapes with an elbow. All right, it's been back and forth all night, folks. Kane on the hunt. Gore coming through with that stop sign of a button, that jump D. There's a guard cancel, doesn't want to be stuck in the corner. Angel needs room to breathe, room to maneuver so she can get that unchained sequence started. Here we go. All right, one more mix up to do it. Gore constantly cranking out that jump CD there. Again, like the stop sign stuff, right? Because they're not trying to give Angel too much room to get away with the pressure, right? Or we're trying to get in inside to achieve pressure. Yeah, she's definitely an in-fighter, wants to be stuck to you like glue. But you see, Kane understands that Rock is good at neutral. It's dangerous to just charge in. Whoa, just get scooped! Oh, no, no. wow. Bro, that was so messy. So unbelievably messy. That was supposed to be an empty jump shatter strike. Accidentally got the max mode confirmed. Went for another Shadow Strike, got stuffed, and then said, third time's a charm, <laughs> and the third one connects. And then we're just going goal. in. Yeah, we're feeling it now. Oh, we're on fire. Chat, I hope one of you clipped that. That just woke me up a little bit. Oh my goodness, and we're still going. Final, final round. I mean, I respect committing to the Shadow Strike three times in a row, honestly. <laughs> wanted it to come out one way or another. Right, well, here I'm we go. getting it. But, all right. Oh, almost got caught. Back and forth, y'all. Pretty much even on meter, anybody's game. You see, though, Kane is having to spend a lot of this meter defensively. Ooh, the reset there. Catches Eldegor landing with the 2B to the setup, but we're not going to go for a mix. Instead, we just create that space. Yeah, now Kane is in control, right? Very much fought tooth and nail for that momentum. And now they're in the driver's seat. However, Dogor sitting on that fourth bar. Oh, you're dead. You did not. No. no you no. did not. No, you had to. Yeah, now you are. Oh. No. Bro. What? What is just happening? Stop, stop, stop. Just don't, just don't, just don't, just let him finish. Just let him finish. He, wanted, he oh must have wanted to DP. Oh, oh my god, bro. Spaghetti is oh, everywhere. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. What a stellar fight. These two. I think he wanted DP straight into climax. I'm almost certain that's what we wanted in this bracket again. All right. Let's see if we can uh, run back. Uh, this is turning in such a great night. It just doesn't stop. We're we're getting so we're getting chat. We are getting absolutely blessed right now with the presence that is Omega Rugal. Yes, yeah. I'm an Omega Rugal fan. I am that guy. I don't care. You can go sit over there if you don't agree. However, I 1,000% agree with this choice. Co Cofero Onesto. Cofero Onesto. Gracias, mi amigo. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've been waiting a long time to see this character again. I only get to see this character in competitive play like once a year. <laughs> yeah, he's just <laughs> not a chunk like people holiday. are hoping for. Really. Yeah, you know, a but character, you, you know that. Uh, and, the, and the thing about Rugal, right, is that, again, it, I feel like Rugal suffers from the same symptoms as Kim did, right? You had all these prior titles where this character was clearly like way different, right? Like, Thinking back to 98 Rugal, right? 98 Rugal, way different, much, you know, uh, the pressure and the way that they can navigate the game. It just seems like a lot more uh, fulfilling, right? So now you're getting into this version and you're expecting maybe like a semblance of that. And it's like, not that at all. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately not there, but Shune is definitely looking a lot better as time has gone on. A character that definitely takes time to cook. Unfortunately, he was able to cook in the first round got cooked by Yamazaki going into that second one there. Yamazaki, a character that's so good at shutting down that air mobility, right? And now, speaking of air mobility, here comes Dark Angel's Isla. Some of the best air buttons and air mobility in the game. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's not just best everything in the game in general, right? So here we go. Yamazaki, 
Kopero, you know, definitely showcasing that the Yamazaki is indeed the soul character, right? Talk about this before, you know, you got your point character, you got your your meter dump character, right? And then I like to call the soul character, the character that you just send, usually tend to flow with the best. And it's not right always the character the in the middle, right? It's just, you know, the character that you kind of see, the, the character where you kind of see the player just really, I guess, showcase their style, showcase what, what they do best. Yeah, and for, I feel like for a lot of players that ends up being Yamazaki, Yamazaki just feels so free form. He, he gets so many different options, so many different things to do in neutral as well. But his time is going to get caught by the EX command grab. Go straight into the Greca series. Once again, Ooh, level two. And you're dead. Oh, a bit of protagonist privilege there, as we, uh, as we would say. As we have Vinny Maru facing off against Orochi Chris. Yeah, Orochi Chris looking like 9S here. Does get caught by the command grab, punching right into the corner. Yeah, this matchup of blast from the past, even, right? Oh, against the back, that's getting caught again, and you're done! What a stellar fight! All right, Dark Angel with the with the fat read on the back dash there, and these, yo, these matches are getting really crazy. There are the, the kind of reads that we have seen in just these last three matches alone have been increasingly more dangerous. They that was a very hard read there on the back dash. That was an amazing. That was an incredibly ballsy call from Dark Angel. There. Hey, worked out beautifully. But now let's see if Kofero can keep it up. I mean, it, it honestly felt like it was a bit of a handicap match, right? It was Yamazaki and Orochi Chris who did the work because Rugal, unfortunately, was just kind of put down here by Shune. Now Rugal finally making some damage stick, chasing the back roll, but isn't quite able to get a full punish. Yeah, in this case, you know, uh, Kofero could try to use the, uh, the Rugal shield to try to keep Shune away, right? Because... The shield, while it is negative on block, has that pushback and does have a fairly uh, generous hitbox when it comes to catching uh, characters that like to use that awkward dash angle, right? Yeah, for sure. Here we go, trying to play that neutral. You see Colfero backing up to try and slow things down a bit just because of the blistering speed that Dark Angel is playing. Shude, there's the guard break, gives him the elbow, and Rugal's out of here once again. Yeah, Kopeta was trying to find a way out of there, right? Hence when they got hit in that sequence earlier, but Dark Angel doing a great job there of just constantly keeping up the Shune pressure. Shune, a character that was seemingly arguably uh, you know, kind of on the underwhelming side, right? But has recently received some love. We started to see a lot more uh, Shune action, a lot more of a presence. Oh, and there's one of the buffs, right? Being able to convert off of that. Look at the damage that we're seeing. This is so much better for Dark Angel. Last time we saw this matchup, Yamazaki stomped. It might be going into a stomp once again here to close out the round. And again, Kofero having that eye, seeing, seeing the opportunity there with the Shatter Strike. And honestly, it looked like Dark Angel was just kind of feeling it there, right? Because they were still in motion when it got hit. They were already carrying out the next step. Yeah, Playgrad coming through with the next step of that Prime sub with two months. Thank you so much for the support. Great to see you back. All right, picked up. Look at this, four bars. Not willing to spend any of it. Just goes for the guard break. And man, we are getting caught blocking a lot here. That's another guard break. Yeah, but you know, it's kind of tough there because if you had noticed right, uh, Kofero tried to roll out just to get some breathing room, but Isla's stand C is a really good button for catching that, right? Because you can kind of OS it, right? You just kind of jump in there and hold forward and see what happens. Because if you're up close, you also get a pretty decent amount of hit stun or block stun. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of tough to deal with that. You you kind of had to play it to stay in the pocket when it comes to defending against her. But as you can see here, way too long, and you're just kind of stuck. Oh, and your back dash gets caught again. That's what we saw before with Benny Morrow, right, against Orochi Chris. 
Colfetto is trying to create so much space. Dark Angel is kind of keyed in on that. He's definitely going for forward moving moves to mostly catch those jump backs or the back dashes. Yeah, you know, and, and Dark Angel's doing a great job of forcing Colfetto to like look for, you know, more, um, not even necessarily riskier, but just um, options that are more expensive. Like you can't use your typical reactions against this, right? This is something where you're gonna have to spend some cash, right? You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to come off of something right and if you want if you want out as you can saw there like they had to spin meter or the guard cancel just to even have a chance of getting neutral back i saw earlier and we've been seeing this characters all night <laughs> like Vinny bar will be in a top eight and i'll be like look right there <laughs> i'm hitting the meme i'm i'm like hey there, there you go right there he's like nah <laughs> can't just do a track oh like, look another top eight right there nah <laughs> can't just do a track we do talk a lot about Clark on Shadow X's team, of course, right? Because probably the rarest character to see a lot is Clark out of the, the three characters on Shadow X's team. But his K-Dash, his K-Dash is just as devastating, incredibly strong. Going up against Iori here, though, against Kane right now, he's been pushed up against the wall. Yeah, you know, and K-Dash did, you know, receive a bit of a normalization, right? Because let's be real, that, that guy was, was on something. <laughs> you know, still pretty much the character we all know and love, right? The, the <laughs> Yo, Tornado, oh yeah, the, 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 the DP yeah. yeah. You can't get in close enough to, can't get in fast enough to punish me. I would actually argue that K-Dash might be the Dante of right? Because K, uh, Dante is not inherently evil. Iori is straight up and is evil. Dante just talks a lot of trash. That's all. No, K-Dash is definitely the like Iori's the Virgil, okay? Yes. Honestly, yes. no. It, I wouldn't even say K-Dash is the Dante. The Dante is Kyo, and the Virgil is Iori. Actually, you know what? Yeah. Yep, that actually makes more sense, for sure. But there is no Kyo here right now. Instead, we're getting some double Iori action. So would K-Dash be narrow? Since he's got the hand, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Now, Shune is near. Oh, there we go. Gets the 2B. Goes straight into the fireworks here. Not enough to get the kill though. Tries to go for the meaty fireball. Nice roll forward. All right, let's see uh, how much extra credit Dan can get out of Siori. Not much, but you know the resources are there. A couple bars for uh, Kane's trouble. Again, Kane playing this on hell here in the middle position. Is Ganny Me Deb coming through with the prime for 26 months? Thank you so much. That was a beautiful catch there from Kane. Utilizing the uh, landing recovery there to catch him with the grab. Or the Ganny Me Baby. Please tell me how to pronounce your name so I can get it right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> mm, good catch. All right, getting some back and forth action here. Looking for that sweet spot, right? Absolutely, I like that we're starting to put out this fireball game, trying to force some jumps. Yeah, and I do like that uh, Shadow is being very careful with the fireball, right? Because Angel does have a move that gets her right past him. So you have to be, uh, you can't be too predictable or else you're going to be eating a lot of stuff. There. You know, and I, oh my. Yeah, and, again, I, and I like that Shadow is, again, like, taking, like you just said, right, just slowing the gameplay down, but you can only slow it down so much as Kane takes that takes that character. Hey, that damage is going to stick. 15 seconds on the clock there, and now it is time for a wrestling match here. Big Hoss Clark up against on hell. Stardom oh, zone. Catch. Already getting started. Oh, woo, we tried to go for a little bit of a Frankenstein reset there. <laughs> yeah. What was that about the damn play? What was this about this character being a scrub killer? <laughs> hey, e everyone's a scrub when they're staring down the barrel of Shadow X's Clark. You know what I'm saying? I need somebody to clip that, too. I need somebody to clip that. I mean, I know what happened, right? You put a hurt box out, you got hit, but it's still funny to look at. <laughs> All right, but now has to get in against Kukri here. That's going to be proven. What? Oh, okay, yeah, never mind. I was going to say, that's going to be a little difficult, but he's immediately he just in stop. just like that. It just keeps going. See, look. And this is not even, like, buff. Like, this is what he just does. All right, so, yeah, no, I'm not here. None of that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you're dead. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, wait a hey. minute. 
Nah, you're not dead. You get one more. You get one more. <laughs> yeah, not quite. So you wanna know what's funny about that super? That one super would be like every single Clark player's argument. See, he's bad. Look, he doesn't get no damage. Like, all right, man. <laughs> Well, I'm not letting this go. I'm not better. letting this go because I had to hear this shit for so long. Like I got the full on arguments about this character. And if you don't know what's messed up, chat knows. Like ch chat is in agreement. Like, nah, Clark players be wild. Like, <laughs> Look, where where Clark get lacks in damage, maybe to your health bar. He makes up for in damage to your your mental and to your soul. All right. Yes. All this character like, definitely man makes grabs you in a insane. row. You can have full health if you get hit by two man grabs in a row. Odds are you're losing the round. Oh man. All right, here we go. It's back to K Dash versus Iori. Unfortunately, K Dash wasn't able to do a whole lot in game number one. Shadow X still came out on top. So definitely looking to establish a little bit more of a foothold here for K Dash in this next round, which fortunately is looking like it might not be happening. What? Yeah, oh, that's, oh. Wow. On the EX slide, the back hop JB. That was nasty. Yeah, that was actually crazy. And again, it's just reads on top of reads on top of reads tonight, folks. Like, again, Night of the Orochi is upon us. Like a book. And now we're back into this mirror match here where Shadow is able to come out on top. And he's going to have to do it once again. Even the playing field rolling out of the way of the taco. Oh, tried it anyway. Might have wanted a cross up there to avoid the sparks. I respect going for it, though. I do respect going for it, trying to get that punch. Nice game. How do how do Iori players know? Like I see that kind of interaction of often amongst like Iori players specifically, like the DP on hit. Like I don't I don't know how they just I don't know I don't know. That's that's just this craziness to me. Like Iori players are nuts. <laughs> like they're mashing. Yeah, one thousand percent. All right, but now it's up to Clark here to make this comeback. Has to get through this healthy Iori. I mean, has to make a reverse OCV, honestly. That's going to be the difficult part here. It doesn't have a whole lot of mirror to do it, but here's the first start. Goes for the reset into the run up backbreaker. Yeah, you said two is what you need, right? So we already got one. Ain't. Oh, that's two. Yep, goes for the turn punches. EX dive, rolling death cradle. Just enough. Yep. Does Jobber know this character, chat? Does Jobber know his character? Hey, I'm just saying. He, he called it. <laughs> he told you two and you're out. <laughs> That's all it takes. We don't even need we don't even need the third strike. No, he's a fastball. Speaking <laughs> of fastball and that slide in straight to the cross up with the elbow. Yeah. Ooh. Oh my goodness. And Kane just, you know, again, utilizing that meter to keep that advantage. Not even opting to go for big damage at this point, just trying to keep Shadow X contained. Yeah, just constantly cranking those buttons to occupy the space that Clark wants to be in. Clark, notorious for his jump angles. Jump A, definitely uh, the thing of nightmare. Get Steiner into the low. Reset. Tries to go low again there to keep the pressure up. What a run through. Blows up Clark. And now we once again have a game three here in our top eight qualifier. So, the, yeah, the, the hard part about on hell up against Clark, you mentioned angles. That's a really good point about those jumping angles, specifically that JA. But also, Clark wants to get a read on the opponent's habits, wants to get a read on their rhythm. And the way that Kane plays on hell, he's constantly moving, always active, that you can never get a read on where he's going to be at any given time, which makes it a little bit more difficult for Clark to approach. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it, it seemingly changes up every game. Right, uh, Kane playing uh, on hell in the last match did not seem to move. Did not move that way against the their prior opponent, right? So like it seems like they have a different strategy almost every time, which makes like you said makes it incredibly difficult, makes it incredibly dangerous trying to approach this character, which is all you saw. Shadow was just trying to approach. 
and could not even reach that zone because Kane was constantly cranking something else out. Oh, and yeah. in, in most, in this case, you know, just cranking the one thing out that I know is going to hit you because I know what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's see here. The, the Really, the biggest weakness of Shadow X's team in this matchup in particular has been k -Dash. Kadesh just really has not been able to carry his own weight. And you know what? Maybe uh, Shadow X understood that. Time to, you know, light a bit of a fire underneath and turn things up a bit. Also, we have made the change to put Clark on the middle position instead of on anchor. Yori is on anchor instead now. So let's see how that is going to pan out for Shadow X. I think the most important thing, though, here is trying to win this first match. Get the first blood, and that is not, as what, that is not what's going to happen here as we get the punish. Seems like we are living and dying by the hard reads tonight, Jobber. You know, trying to go for the hard read on the air to air there using the uh, the uh, the spike, but um, again, you know, it didn't pay off. However, Shadow X putting Clark in the uh, second, you know, in the middle position here might actually help out because one of Clark's main strengths, right, is his butt, push. like the way he's able to check you, like, and and has multiple, like, I would, I don't want to say OS is right, but as you can see there, like, you know, he's he's hitting a button preemptively, still able to capitalize on that situation. All right, yeah, two B, two D, just trying to push out, maybe get a frame trap there. Let's see the patience. Doesn't want to overextend here with Clark. Recognizes that it's gonna be difficult for Iori to make that reverse OCB, so we need to shut down Iori while we can. Quick Max confirmed, but not gonna quite get anything. And oh, here like we go. EX turn punch confirmed off the 2C. And I do like Shadow's change of pace, right? If you're noticing, Shadow is playing a lot more methodically in this case. Just picking their shots a lot more carefully, letting Kane come to them, right? Like, if you notice, anytime that Shadow tries to push the issue, Kane is right there with a stop sign. So, Shadow changing things up and honestly not trying to push the issue too much, just trying to let Kane kind of do their thing for a moment while they wait for the opportunity has been paying off because you can already see here Shadow immediately with a lot of real estate capitalizing off the confirm there. Yeah, here we go. Turn punches again. Goes for a bit of a frame kill. Meaty pressure. Empty jump into the back breaker. And now Shadow X sitting at set point. Just needs to take down this Kukri. We saw what happened last time these two characters went up against each other. Shadow X was able to get in over that fireball and put the pressure on. Let's see if we can recreate that. Here we go here. It's a classic matchup, right? Rushdown versus Doning, and even more so for the Grappler, right? You've seen it time and time again. What am I going to do? I don't have a fireball. Well, you're going to find out tonight here on TNS, folks. Yeah, there's the standing C. Wait. That was good patience there to wait for a reaction from Kane. DDT into the elbow drop. Gets that OP option. It's fine to make these trades for Shadow X. We still have Iori waiting. As long as you can force Kane to spend that meter and get as much damage as you can to stick. Throws out the Frankensteiner. Was mashing into the level one. Character's already done 180% health. But because he doesn't get 400 damage from his super. <laughs> Character has problems. <laughs> well, there you go. Shadow X. Calendars, guys. And that's actually a big, big buff if you think about it, right? Because let's be honest here, a lot of the KOF players got nine to fives, all right? A lot of grown folks hanging around. So, you know, I'm very curious to see what the pool is going to look like once we get that schedule. Absolutely. Here we go. Pressure is on for Reno up against Lokov. And Reno, of course, rocking double Yash with the Hider. Yeah, and that's a tried and true team before you've seen before, right? Double Yashiro. Oh, love this song. I am never disappointed on KOF Ever. <laughs> no, it is always fire. Here we go. Gets the throw. Let's go for that jump in. 
and pulls my man's heart out. Alright, here we go. Yamazaki does what he does best. Fox the Fez and throws him off the scent. And you see, Reno just trying to keep that distance. Now it goes on in. Now that we smell blood, we're able to score that knockdown, right? Gets the cross up. That's it for Yamazaki. But we missed the pickup. It's all right. It's all right. We were able to do it. Did Reno drop Ash? Hell yeah. However, Reno did bless us with a few movies, right? You know, it, wasn't, it wasn't like uh, they just, you know, they gave us nothing. We got a chance to see, right? They did make it work to a degree, but like you said, right, things had to change. It, it Sometimes Ash does come back. Sometimes Ash comes back depending on the matchup. Reno hasn't completely shelved him. He's just there waiting on the bench. But right now, it looks like Heider might be getting put on the bench with this Benny Maru pressure. Backed up to try and prevent the jump out, but still falls prey to it. No, they wanted the DP there. Uh, I knew exactly what he was looking for. They want a Stinga. Well, not DP, yeah, Stinga. The motion is like DP. Oh, Quick Max. Or excuse me, Wall Max. Yeah, I want to utilize that meter. Heidern, a character with when equipped with resources can be very difficult to approach, right? Because you're constantly looking for the EX fireball, and then if they feel like you're right, they can crank out a, a, a energy disc. Just to keep you honest. Let's see. Point Blake fireball there. He's going to catch Holkoff attempting to jump in. Oh. Yeah, we'll take that trade any day. Full health coming back now for Lokoff. As the last code has been claimed in the match, Reno, thank you all so much for the support. Remember, you can still keep up the contributions by utilizing the sponsor quest or direct contributions. We appreciate y'all. Yeah, absolutely, folks. Thank you so much. And remember, the sponsor quest can actually give you an opportunity to contribute more than what the coupon codes were offering. So definitely be sure to check those out for sure. Uh. Oh, okay. Good button placements here from Reno. Low cost for the one, you know, trying to throw out that 2C. Whipping, but there it is. Empty jump, level three. Die forever. But, but we already know what's waiting right around the corner. Reno now has the resources, and, and Lokov understands. You see that? Yeah, they back it up immediately. Oh, no. Find a solid touch. Looking for any of those C normals instead. Gets the JA. Goes right into the quick max. We're going into level three climax. We're doing the. Oh no. They did the stylish joint with the flip over. Oh, you never get to see that combo. Oh my god. Yeah, gosh. you're dead. You're dead, dead. <laughs> oh no. I knew it. I knew it. I'm like, nah. Reno's too calm. <laughs> Reno's like, all right, all right. You got me. You got me. You got your little, your little man grab. Now let me show you my. <laughs> it's with the Hulk super, man. Yeah. <laughs> let me show you my grab. <laughs> What's Hulk's big rock super called? I can't remember. I don't remember either. <laughs> <laughs> don't fire me, Tong. <laughs> Gamma Crush, there you go. That's what I'm gonna start calling his level three Gamma Crush. Yeah, there we go. And of course, if you're Reno, you're feeling that, right? You're on fire. You just robbed the man and you liked it. Oh my goodness, the jump A from downtown. Whoa! <laughs> the 5 A, he just punched his soul. You know? Oh, here we go. And there you go, right there. Hip -hop. How do you beat one infused with the Orochi blood? You punched him in the mouth. Yeah, nice challenge there with the 2A from Lokal. Gets the kick back into the corner. And just like that, the tides have turned. Goes to the overhead stomp. Yeah, you expect nothing less with two players of this quality, right? Like you said before, this is a classic match here. These players are no strangers to each other's danger. Oh, wow, that back roll into the... Oh, he wanted the chip. That's exactly what he was going for, was going for the chip damage, but it was just too short. 
A lot of that uh. damage is still gonna stick here, and look at that. There is no health. You can sneeze on Yamazaki, and he's done. Right, understanding that, right? Lokov's gonna do whatever they can to get that extra credit. Uh, those long limbs, baby. All right, here we go. Anybody's game at this point. Reno with a bar. Low cop with two. Pretty interesting matchup, of course, because uh, Benny Maru is not really uh, able to enforce their game plan from a full screen without meter. Reno doing a good job of just staying mobile. Yeah, you cranking out that jump C. Uh -huh, gets the air throw. Again, trying to keep the pressure up with that dash up 2B. Yeah, I, I, Lokov definitely needs to be careful about throwing out that orb, you know, as a uh, kind of tool to prevent Reno from running in or jumping in because he has been able to punish him. But this is a huge confirm there with the quick max. Gets the dive kick on top of it. Ooh. And, you know, the thing about Heiner is as good as he is, you know, he's essentially like how he looks, right? Like, he looks like Bison and plays like Bison, right? With the charge attacks and everything else. Just, uh, I mean, but essentially it's guy, right? So you have to be able to constantly buffer the charge whenever you need it. Oh, here we go. No, try to adjust. And there we go. Gets the low option. Goodbye, Hyder. Gonna have to scatter his ashes to the heartless sea. And now it's time for right, Roku Yashiro to come in and try and clean things up. You know, Reno doesn't want to take it to a game three. Yeah, the star of the show, essentially. Of course, Reno gonna try to get the job done here. Saving on resources. Went for the command grab. No dice. However, Lokov not really punishing the whiff command grab there is a sign of things. I'll let you know some information there. Oh no, gets flipped. Look, spends the level two. We want to steal as much damage as we possibly can. That is not good for Reno here. Even though we're able to get rid of Benny Maru, I mean, a lot of that's going to stick going into Geese. Yeah, but again, Yashido. Having Yashiro buttons does have an opportunity here to check Geese at those ranges that he likes to harass at. But you gotta be careful. Oh. Didn't take oh. the bait. That too. All right. Here, here we go. So far. Uh, 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 uh. We are pretty much even. Ooh, with yep. no, no, and he dropped it. The mix-up is so nasty there. But now we have to survive this pressure from Geese. Tries to go for the... Oh, my God. He didn't get punished. He ran away with that one. Stolen. That was that was such a huge whiff. And unfortunately, Lokov was unable to capitalize on it. Reno coming out on top. These two know how to rumble. Winner. Seeing that red hair, maybe. Right? So, uh... Very curious to see how this shakes out. But here we go. Clark in top eight. Yeah, Not in my KOF. On point. on point here to go up against Shune. Interesting, too, because one of the reasons why Clark could have some issues we saw before with Angel was that movement, right? The movement that Angel has. Shune has that in spades as well. But Shadow X probably feels more confident in this matchup, which is the reason why we immediately put Clark on point. Far though, getting blown up. Even the Frankensteiner gets baited out. Oh, try to get something going with the uh, air dash shenanigans, shenanigans there. What game you think this is? Oh, good catch there with the 2C. Yeah, you see the patience here, Shadow X recognizing. We can't get too greedy. And even as a park player, you want to get greedy, but the JA got called out with a clean anti-air there from Perros. All right, here we go. However, you know, you got to think about it right when you have the, uh, even with the health lead, right, with the time going down, that's less health that you're going to get back. And with a character like Rio is able to just crank out so much for so little, you know, 
Peros is definitely not out of the danger zone. Still has to be careful here. And being careful is exactly what he's doing, right? Finds the stray hit, and now it's time to stick like glue. Start running that pressure. Don't give Rio any room to breathe. But we got a little too over greedy. There was just enough space there for Shadow X to find the gap. And hold up. Hold up. I, I was too caught up in the flow of the match. What the hell is this? Rio on Shadow X? Shadow X changing characters. This is... Hold up. <laughs> I'm a little did, I'm a little did, confused we, right we now. We just brought this up. We just talked about this. Character I, I variety all around, all across the board. No one is safe. <laughs> Are we going to Shadow X? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, no k kind of night? He, he has been so religiously, religiously playing K-Dash, Iori, and Clark since the game began. Since in prior KOF games as well. So seeing him bring out Ryo is so interesting. Yeah, but you know, that's one of the things, right? And I feel like that's kind of a mental stack for, for, for Shadow X at that point, right? Because you spend so much time watching a player utilize the same character that you may not you know know if they have a character just waiting in the wings for them to try out and shadow x is the caliber of player that can make it work so you know maybe might be trying something different here and we've seen it before right while it came right made some switches right and and it was paying off for them not always playing keo so well, it's definitely possible. Uh, the Rio did not, wasn't able to make that much of a splash as we were probably expecting. And now it's up to Iori to pick up that slack here and make sure that we can keep Shadow X's dreams alive here in top eight. Oh, I love that. Using the first hit of the Rekka just to, just for movement, right? To avoid getting hit by the jump in there from Pero. And again, I keep talking about this. Iori players have some of the best DP reads. I've ever seen in life. I don't get it. I, I will never, I don't know if I'll ever understand it. Like they're just, they just always know. They're just always right. I don't understand it. Even on each other. You already match up, like you already mirror matches. Like they're still able to, to pinpoint when they're gonna put, put the button. And make a short work there. So there it is folks. Yeah. Two legs of the parlay complete. Red Pedro, hair and Leona appearance. Leona Pedro victory is the uh, the only the only time you're gonna be seeing Leona in the windscreen like this. And, and TNS is from Pero. He's got that dog in him. All right. His name shouldn't be Pero Sin Lag. It should be Pero in him. Ah, there you go. See. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, continue on to the next match. Now remember, folks. No first to three Ready? until grand winners and losers finals. Got to be in that top three spot if you want the promised land. All right. So uh, sticking it out with the Rio, folks. So here it is, letting it rock. Shadow X believes maybe you should too. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, chases down the back roll on top of that. Yeah, this is where it gets real tough for Clark, right? Because Clark likes being able to keep the opponent still. But against a character like Shune that has all these weird, awkward angles to play around with, having that air dash, which is not typical in KOF, right? Because KOF is all about the short hop action. So you have this character who can take that and then manipulate it in such a in such an amazing faction, really. Like, right there, like, that is... Woo. Yeah, in a lot tough. of cases, he doesn't even look like he's playing KOF when he gets that engine going. Yeah, now absolutely, he, right? You have that life lead here. Now is the time to make Shadow X make a mistake, right? Just play a little bit more lame. Yeah, you try over to catch him with the sweep there. Ooh. Oh, good catch. 10 seconds left on the clock. Oh, he's the break with Snyder. Level one, that's gonna wow. kill. Yeah, but not gonna be able to capitalize off, capitalize much off of that three seconds. So still gonna be pretty much in danger range. All right, here we go, Team Icardi. Saluting each, saluting off. 
Oh, good catch there with the sweep. Good catch with the stance. Oh, my goodness, what a reaction there from Peros. Oh, trying to put up that 2D. Long as normal there for Clark to try and get something started, but it's not going to happen here. Hydran's able to take him out in quick fashion. Granted, there wasn't a lot of life remaining from that gauntlet of a first round. But now here comes Rio in to try and help Shadow X get a lead. And, and you know, in in that last bit of a scramble there with Clark, Shadow X was able to secure some meter there for Rio, which is something important, right? Because you need that to really capitalize off of this game plan. That's even if you get to achieve it here. Pero is doing a great job of just keeping Shadow X contained. All right, uses some meter there with the guard cancel, but gets caught. Nice Ooh, parry. Parry. Yeah, but wasn't able to capitalize on it, sadly. And again, folks, we was talking about it earlier tonight. You know, for all of Rio's damage and safety, he has a glaring weakness, and that's his lack of range at full screen and even uh, mid-range, even mid-range, right? Because Hyder hasn't really approached him at all during this round. It's just been, you know, constantly staying out the way with the jump CD, utilizing those fireballs. Good bait there on the wake up. Pretty much frustrated Shadow X enough at that point. All right, round start situation here with Iori. We have a lot of butter to spend, but what are we going to do with it? Oh, the anti-air with the finger guns. Spear finger. Nice, rolling out of the cross-up attempt. Still, though, not out of the pressure. Oh, we let a DP rip. That could have been scary. All right, Shadow X here. Down but not out, just needs one clean hit. Pretty much in death range at this point now with the uh, amount of meter. And this is so doable, but oh. that's not gonna happen. Instead, Peros in lag is going to take Shadow X down in the first match here of Top 8. Yeah, good stuff there for Pedos and Lag. Taking the game set and match. A lot of two O's. YouTube page there. Maybe follow a Twitch page or two, and you'll be able to contribute to the pot just as much as the coupon code, if not more. So definitely be sure to check that out. Yeah, easy peasy, so get in there. But now we're getting right into this match, and Reno is getting right into the pressure here up against Dark Angel. Doesn't want to give Isla any room to breathe, and that is a very smart game plan. Isla is... Uh, We've been talking about it. Like, basically number one at the moment. Fades out the DP. Gonna get a nice punish here. Doesn't have a ton of meter to spend. Still solid. Yeah, and I always felt that, like, uh, Yashido is probably one of the better characters to deal with easily shenanigans because it's just a matter of design, really, because this is kind of how it's gone since the beginning. Yashido's 2C is the perfect button to check those short hop shenanigans. And because it leads to so much, Isla cannot easily run those shenanigans as she would on another character, right? Because Yasha is gonna constantly have that button just waiting. Yeah, for sure. All right. Dash again. Oh, beautiful punish. Decides not to spend the level one on the second DP. I respect that. Just hanging on to the meter here for yeah, later yeah, days. Yeah, for sure, right? Don't spend it until you're ready. Waiting for the clean hit here. Good stuff there with the armor. All right, a little bit of back and forth here. Reno sitting on almost three bars a meter, so can very easily even things up. Dark Angel understanding that is doing a great job of just making things super awkward for Dark for uh, Reno right now. Yeah, and able to close out the round. Still two bars up on deck. All right, and here we go. Hyder with four bars. Good luck. Uh, uh. I don't stuff. even need it. I just want it. And VK coming through with the raid. Thank you so much, VK. Hope your stream went well. Yeah, shout out to Violet Kane, of course, showing out tonight for the uh, TNS bracket. Thank you, thank you so much. Violet Kane, one of the best to do it. Oh, I love the whiff button into the run-up throw. Again, just getting those frame kills so we can time our meaties. 
Here we go. Anybody's game. Guard meter looking low. Reno got to be uh, careful here. Back dash. Roll backwards. Create as much space as possible. Trying to stay outside oh, yeah. of that danger zone. There's the EXDP. I think that's one of the wildest moves to give a zoner, right? The ability to life steal. <laughs> is, it's so it's good. Crazy. He needs it. There we go. Right? Another ES and it's a command kick. grab. Like, what? Oh, the EX cross through. Dark Angel was not ready for that jump scare and is now down to his anchor character here for Bar Benny Maru. We can easily take this to the anchor wharf. We can find one way to thread the needle here. Yeah, four and a half bars, definitely plenty to work with, right? But Reno, this is usually when Hydern is at his most dangerous, when he knows that you want in, right? Just smells the blood that you just sensed, right? And already you've lost so much just for trying to attempt to get in. Oh. Yeah, that jump, that jump heavy punch. Such an annoying oh, button, and that was so wow. crazy. Jump C just constantly checking you. Bro, it just ate his super. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the jump back gave just enough time to uh, get out of the initial invincibility scenario there. And just ever so gently landed <laughs> right on top of Vinny Morrow's freshly... Uh, freshly shaped hair but immediately with that we're just mashing into rematch right no fear we're ready to go oh yeah and reno ready, is ready to go for sure wanting that top three spot looking to get there as quick as quickly as possible this time, though, we're going to move Benimaru to the front position instead of on anchor, right? Uh, Isla was on front before, but she did get kind of run down, so I do like the switch. I think Isla is a much better anchor than Benimaru is. Yeah, for sure, but again, you have to see what's also waiting, waiting at the anchor spot as well, Orochi Yashiro, which can very easily spell danger for Isla, as we saw in the last round. Oh. I love doing that to people. When I would hit the 2C and we would trade, even though we would trade, I just know that they're pissed off. I'm just like, I know it just in their mind, it's just like, oh my gosh, they're really hard. <laughs> oh, good check with, their, with the 5B. Yeah, you see the challenge there with the 2B also after the shoulder check. Yeah. You know, this is essentially where Yashiro shine, shines, right? You know, Vinny Maru, very much like an in and out style of play, you know, constantly hopping around with the jump B, uh, utilizing the uh, the lightning ball, building meter for seemingly for free, right? Using utilizing the knee. But Yashiro plays that game style too. But the thing is, because Yashiro doesn't have any projectiles, he kind of take advantage of having a little more range on those strikes. Something that Vinny Maru tends to struggle with. Oh, look at that shimmy. My man is, mm -hmm. is crouching and standing. All right, there's All right. DP. Nice the mix up there. Uh. Yeah, man, the slicer again hitting its mark. Yeah, and that's good stuff there from Reno. Having a good eye, knowing when uh, Dark Angel is trying to approach or just in general just not prepare for that situation. EX Fireball, chases to the skies, gets the EX Juggle there. DP, again, another situation where Dark Angel decides to hold on to the super, and I have to respect that a lot, right? Just holding on to the meter for another day, build it up and make it more of a threat. Oh, good catch there with the DP. Oh, what side was that on? Oh, my goodness. Nasty, nasty business here. Nasty for sure. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, no. We all got hit tonight. <laughs> I, I, I know. Look, I'm always getting hit by these makes up, okay? Yeah. <laughs> If you if you if you know what side you that was on, you're lying. There's no way you do. <laughs> oh, but great throw tech there from Reno. Recognizing that Dark Angel was a little too high on that jump in. Yeah. Alright, here we go. This is Dark Angel's chance to lock things up. Even up the score. 
It's pretty much the character to do it as well, right? Now we are not having a... Yeah, Roshi Yashiro not having any projectiles essentially has to play Ryo's game. And that's what you want if you're Dark Angel, right? Right oh. there. There's you. You see it. Those buttons. Those yeah. gorilla buttons. The Shatter Strike getting stuff. Banding D is enough to do it. And Dark Angel takes us to game three. And you see already, once we get into top eight, we're starting to see these matches uh, you know, go the distance now. Of course, Peros was able to take out Shadow X 2-0. But we still have our loser side of the bracket as well. All right, here we go, folks. One game apiece. He's sitting comfortably in the in the stands. Again, that was a, the same exact situation that we saw last time, right? Was the jump in, but being a little too high, so Reno immediately was mashing in the throw. Which is a very important thing to do. When your opponent jumps in on you, if you get hit, you have to be pressing on throw. Because if they're too high, you can reverse that. Oh, yeah. You know, it's one of those things that you have to check, right? And that's one of the funniest things about the game web I've noticed, that there's a lot more active defense that I've seen than in other titles. Just speak it to that scenario, right? Like getting hit, but recognizing the angle of the hit, right? And knowing that there are other options that are available. But the advantage is not entirely real in that case. Right? That, that ball. Trying to go for something up. <laughs> what is real here is the damage that Dark Angel is putting out, shutting down Orochi Yashiro early on. So for those of you that may not be aware, the difference between Yashiro and Orochi Yashiro outside of the main is the move set. So regular Yashiro, you know, very much uh, more of a uh, like a brawler, you know, striker style, uh, as you can see here, having the jet up, the jet upper, the jet rush, um, and all that good stuff. You know, a lot, a lot of uh, punching and kicking. And and I know it sounds simplistic, but that's literally what that is. <laughs> Orochi Yashiro is a grappler style rushdown. A lot more grab focus. Some of the same buttons, right? Having the uh, the six B as well as the uh, the six the six C. Or, I'm sorry, the six A. But when it comes to the specials, the specials are where the differences are made. The specials in the super much. Uh, they are literally just grabs instead of strikes. Yeah, punchy and grabby. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's literally that's the all it is. It. Yeah. That's that's the TLDR. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it sounds reductive, but that is legitimately the the, the exact way you would describe it. <laughs> right now, Yashiro is putting the hands on. There it is. Gets the throw after the guard cancel. Solid punish. And now we have to. Ooh, there it is. That sweep from Benny. That two D reaches so far. What a good poking tool. Yeah, and that's the thing about defending against Yashiro, right? Is that he'll do his sequence, but there is light at the tunnel. There are moments where you do have the ability to strike back. But for all of like Yashiro's range, a lot of his best buttons are kind of high reach. Right? Yep. Oh, oh, nice! Oh, Dude, it out. Out. Mm. Oh, nice switch. Help my troubles. No, another dirty cross up. Yep, sauce nice up there. Work. So let's see now. It's the anchor war. Winner moves on to winner's finals. All right, now this is going to be interesting for sure, you know, because Hyder having that half moon uh, deep, that half moon DP there with the flash kick essentially has the way to kind of stuff Isla from doing her little jump shenanigans, right? As you just saw there. Reno utilizing the meter, trying their best to keep Isla out, but ended up stepping into the danger zone, took a little one step too far. You already see Dark Angel is utilizing the air mobility from Isla so well, and there we go. One cross up is all it took. And Dark Angel moving on, setting Reno to losers. I feel like Salty Bet is like Boys bet on Adult DVD. Swim was uh, to us growing up as teenagers, right? It's that thing that's, be, that's on at 3 in the morning. You already can't sleep. 
<laughs> like, uh, you we, know, ain't here. <laughs> we ain't sleeping on this match either. Kane starting off with Yori up against Coolest Benny Maru. All right, so Benny immediately putting the pressure on. Wow, yeah, we DP and steal in that turn back, but Kane is able to get the anti-air there with the Rekka. Eats another DP for his troubles. All right, here we go. We're getting it started early. We are going back and forth right now. Jumping with that JB. And now on hell coming in up against a basically full health Benny Maru. Not a solid start here for Kane, but we've seen on hell make some landslide victories before. Just needs the breathing room to do it. Big upper. All right, I'm done. <laughs> I just got to hit the guitar one time. All right, here we go. Getting it going. Kane 9999. Oh, no. We weren't able to get the anti air there. And now evened up in health. Nice back roll from Kula. Was able to create just enough space to get the whip punish there on Kane. And then our jump in meaty was missed time. Kula just wakes up with the throw. Thank you. All right, here we go. Kukri up to bat. Three sitting on three bars a meter. Definitely can get it done against Mini Maru for sure. Mini Maru not really having the range to compete here, and Kane easily just running away with it. Oh, and the trade, unfortunately, means that Benny Maru is down. Full health coming back to Kukri. So even after that lengthy first round, we still are going to be pretty much evenly tied up. Back to square one. All right, here we go. And then again, folks, we've been seeing this, you know, this story tried and true. Rio does not have much that they can do when it comes to the range game. This is why you do this. Kind of capitalize there. Cash out when you can. That combo is so great. Looks good. He dumped so far away. That's one of Kukri's strengths. You're not safe no matter where you are on the screen. But we wake up with the DP immediate super cancel. Just sending it all in. And the clean, honest jump in allows Kula to take game number one. Right, and that's game number one for the dragon there. Kula making a very strong showing right now. Again, folks, every match is pretty much like grand finals here at TNS. Anybody can get it at this point. So many killers, so little time. All right, here we go, folks. We're getting it started into game number two. Remember, folks. Only top three gets the first to three. So it's still anybody's game. We are now officially in the shark infested waters of the loser side of the bracket. You heard correctly, it is not the loser side, it is not the lower side, it is the loser side. We're here because you lost. But there's well, a nice you different. Gets a clean jump in again. Wow. Oh, but gets punted. Oh, a bit of a frame trap. Gets caught low this time. Level one. Get the DP after. Yes, sir. Straight to the 2D. Catch the ankles. And Kula is still in the lead here. Great start to game number two. Keeping that snowball of momentum rolling. The ball is in Kula's court. Go. On hell doing what she does best. Keep you guessing. Oh, and a raw shot strike to check the dash up. Oh, don't go nowhere. On hell. Pushing the pace here. Lula trying desperately to fight their way out, but Kane doing a great job of just stuffing them in the corner. Alright, here we go. Aim, evening things up there with the on hell. All right, here we go. Now on hell, having to stay close in. 
pretty much has to play Rio's game, so gotta be careful there. Ooh, see, just trying to get those jump ins. But EX catches your legs, fades out the DP, and let's see, what are we gonna do? Are we willing to spend a lot of meter? EX? Yeah, because of the EX, we weren't able to cancel into a level one, but that's all right, still did a nice triple damage. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the knockdown there to try to get something going. Oh, one of the unblockable, no dice. Oh yeah, you have to. Oh, You're gonna cash God. that all the way out again. Whoa, the people's elbow! Oh, Bates up the DP! Yo, you have got to be dog. kidding me. Oh my goodness, what did we say? What did we say, chat? Every match, anybody can get it. 800 plus tuned in right here to watch this beat down. Adrian coming through with the prime sub for two months. Welcome back and thank you. And on hell is finally down. She put in plenty of work though. Helping oh, Kane yeah, stay alive. Look, people asking, is on hell evil? Uh, I mean, she's a pro wrestler. No, she's just a heel. She, she's just rude. That's she's all. She's a heel, all right? She's healing it up. Yeah. She's, she's a little mean. That's all. Yeah. I guess to me. Oh, right, nice. Okay, pillar able to catch. Yeah. Squeezes out some extra damage with the second one. The heal and the creep. <laughs> If she's evil, why is she hot? I'm going to need you to go Google Rhea Ripley. All right? You're you welcome. You know? You know? All right. Oh, that, what a trade. Slide. Oh, the slide, though, was too deep in. Pula was able to get the punish, but doesn't go for the quick max. Gets it this time and misses the confirm. What is happening? Oh my gosh. Can y'all not please? My heart can't take much more. Hello. And, oh my gosh. <laughs> and there we go. Able to close it out. Kula eliminates Kane from the bracket. Good God. On the anchor side, we got Isla on point this time around, which is uh, definitely, you know, Dark Angel's preferred setup there because they like to get the shenanigans started early. Isla, one of those characters that kind of just goes wherever you want to put them, right? Because they can, they can work with or without you. Yeah, for sure. She's just a great all-rounder, one of the best to do it here. Going in the rival match, too. This is Cannon, Shune versus Isla. Look at this, just jailing Pero in the corner right here. Tries to go for the 2 ski again, but went a little too early this time, a little too quick on the draw. You know, I kind of like what uh, Peros and Lag was uh, was doing there, right? Uh, was essentially challenging Dark Angel to go ahead and try to uh, anti-air them when they was going in there. But going in, uh, Cracker2122 with the $50 contribution to the Macharino. Thank you so much. Yeah, we just appreciate like you. Yeah, just like that, folks, we're already creeping up on our $100 mark. So remember, make sure that you are typing exclamation point Macharino in the chat. Utilize those sponsor quests, y'all. Remember, it's about 800 of us in here. At, uh, each person takes advantage of the sponsor quest there. That could be an additional $100 right there in the pot. Well, I'll make sure I don't miss you. Sasquatch with $20 in the Macharino as well. Thank you so much for the support. And right now, Dark Angel needs a little bit of support. Gets caught into the blender, but is just knocked right out of it. Pretty sure Pedos wanted to go for the suck there, but wasn't able to get it. All right, here we go here. Dark Angel trying to make it happen. Oh, the X Slicer dashing right on through. And there we go. The air-to-air -air situation allows Pedos to come out on top. All right, here we go. Double parry is there trying to deal with the uh, zoning. Look at man, slow walk down there. Rio. A brick house, but this is an alcohol. Oh my gosh. You went on forever. My man was punching. Why would you not just super jump? 
Just hyper jump. Just super jump. Why would you hop in there? No. He's throwing a flurry of punches in front of him. No. Oh, that's so unfortunate. That's so unfortunate. All right, here we go. All up to Lady Leona. Working on the fourth bar. Bro, my, my man was happen. throwing for, for my for my Evo fans out there, all right. And I know I know Mexico loves Evo. My man was throwing punches like like Itagaki. <laughs> Just un, unlimited machine gun blows. All right, back roll, trail of the space. Yes, follows up the earring there with the slicer, so he's able to blow up the parry. All right, B has come to set up the Mediocre. Oh, no. Wanted the conversion there, but didn't get it. So Dark Angel is going to be able to take game number one. Remember, this is winner's final, so it is going to be three out of five. A little bit of an extended set here, so Pero gets another opportunity. Yep, remember, folks, we are now in officially in top three territory, which means we are now in the promised land. First to three, no longer first to two. You get that extra game. Gonna keep things going here. Dark Angel taking first game there. Very, very strong stuff with the Rio. That's kind of strange, you know. Uh, Isla usually tends to run over a lot of the cash, right? But we've been seeing a lot more uh, responses and answers from other players, spe specifically tonight, when it comes to dealing with you. Well, yeah, you know, the more popular a character gets, the more, uh, the faster counterplay comes out against them, right? So that is what we have been seeing here tonight. People are just so used to fighting this character at this point, but still, she's a force to be reckoned with. That guard break nearly killed Pero. And now has to make a bit of a comeback here. A bit of a comeback. A huge comeback in this first round. Tries to go for the Hail Mary Shatter Strike with that dash up throw there from Dark Angel is going to put Shune on his back. All right, here we go. It seemed like Dark Angel just kind of turned things up a notch there and just never let off the gas. Oh, they're not the Shune. They're going to do the same thing with the Hydern here. However, got to be careful because Hydern having that half moon hitbox can't really jump on him or over. Oh, try to go for the read there with the stinger. Oh, green side, but too high to get the actual combo. That is unfortunate. It didn't look like he was too high. It felt kind of more like he just didn't press in time. Yeah, you know, the jump C, as uh, strong as it is in terms of, like, its cross-up potential, is one of those buttons that uh, you have to really commit to. It does not have as much hit stun as you think. So here we go, still. It's down to the wire. Wow, With command cool. grab, it's a DP. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's catching on to those habits, right? Uh, a lot of the times you see Hydrants go for DP immediately into a fireball afterwards to try and catch their opponent getting a little aggressive. Dark Angel sniffing that out and going for the jump and calling it. And I do like that counterplay there from Pero because, you know, not letting Isla like set up their uh, their gas cans for their boost to press them, right? So still forcing Isla to uh, utilize the strikes, right? To play into Leona's game. Edo's gonna have a tall order here. Just got the Isla down. Now he's gonna have to deal with the Rio and then Mini Maru coming right on up after. Yeah, I mean, any of these hits could lead to just a damage that is gonna be really difficult to come back from. But there we go, 2B, quick max confirmed. Speaking about damage to come back from, wow, able setup to, there. able to block that setup, and now that quick max is gone. All that meter spent just to get a setup for very little damage. Here we go, gets another opportunity. Rolls in to make sure we can get that meaty jump in. Yeah, and you know, one could argue like, hey, why aren't you spinning the bar to kill them faster? But you gotta remember, there's a whole, whole character coming up right after this, so. Good stuff there on Pero for uh, saving as much meter as possible to prepare for this last match, for this last angle. 
Alright, backdash is going to be caught with the slicer. And because we're in the corner, we're going to get that extended combo and even more pressure. Thanos. Trying to uh, pick their spot here, trying to find an opening. But Dark Angel opened them up with a 2B. And level two, yep. Just sending it to make sure we close it out. What Don't even give Pero any opportunities to think of mounting a comeback. And now 2-0 here for Dark Angel means that Pero has to play three perfect games to make a reverse 3-0. Yeah, but you know, that last game was very important, right? Because they got a lot of major information in terms of what they were doing right in that case. So if you're Peros, right, you can take that and try to mold it into, uh, into something to uh, get you that momentum, right? But it looks like we're going to mold it into something else entirely as we have Team Magical Girl, Nakorudu, Leona, and Sylvie. Yeah, Sylvie, uh, Sylvie surprisingly also been growing in prominence. There's a, a few Sylvies who have actually already qualified for the SNK World Championships, which is really exciting. This character's got the tools to succeed and definitely has the damage. Her main downside just being pretty stubby. But Nakaruru yeah. coming in is really the interesting pick, I feel like. I feel like people have kind of flirted with Nakaruru, but no one's really committed to her, right? She just doesn't have that sauce that people need. Yeah, you know, and on paper, she's got a lot of strong stuff, right? But like you said, right, you know, it's one of those characters that, like, they have good things, but they don't have a lot of dirty things. And yeah. You're dealing with a character like Isla, who clearly, <laughs> you know, is not playing is not playing the game you're playing. <laughs> Her DP is fire. Her DP is really good. But right now, uh, all we've seen is bird dive once, and that's about it. All right, all right. second bird dive. You going to see any other moves? Hold on. Third bird dive, maybe. Oh, there it wait is. A minute. A DP again. It's that angle that the DP goes at, which is why it's so good because you can catch your opponent jumping in from so far away. You can even catch their short hops in a lot of cases because of that angle. Yeah, but so much, so much real estate has already been built for Dark Angel here. Pedos is trying to do their best to get something started, but Dark Angel not really having to do much of anything at this point. Yeah, getting close to chip damage as well. And there we go. Just goes for the J.A. Is, the is able to close out Nakaruru. And yeah, now it is a, down to Leona. Yeah, and that was kind of tough, right, for sure. And uh, putting Leona in the second position to try to get a little more mileage out of her. Right, Archangel cashing that meter out to do the damage. Pedal can definitely still do this, though. Ooh, sneaks in a little blowback. Dark Angel is just essentially just making sure that Pedal cannot get a clean hit. You know, just constantly occupying those spaces, even if it ends up coming in and coming out of the trade. Oh, from downtown, the jump beat leading into the quick mode, the quick max. And a beautiful conversion there with 33 seconds to spare. So, gonna get a nice chunk of health back. And just like that, pedal. We're back in the fight. Exactly what we need, but still coming against Rio. And we've already seen the damage that this character can do. Hits like a truck and is built like one, too. Nice. Goes for the X reversal. Stop short this time after the parry on the earring. It's going to get caught, though. DP, double DP, spends the super this time. That's crazy. It's up with air to air. <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> I mean, that's what this man does. Yeah, gorilla arms. All right, now, here we go. Last life set point for Dark Angel. Ready? Sylvie, can she dance her way to victory here? Oh, immediately coming off of the bar there. Might have been an accident. However, we're going to go ahead and work with what we got. And... Clearly, we don't need much. Oh, and that was a beautiful bait there. Under using Dark Angel's knowledge to their advantage, actually, turning it against them. Oh, tried to go for another cross up overextended just a little too bit. Oh, try to read there. Uh, 
little early. And another DP coming out from Dark Angel. Not really allowing Peros to get with these jump-ins for free. You see, even challenging the rehop there with the close C. Oh, no. You needed that combo and got the drop. Fireball. Again, just a close normal preventing that rehop pressure. It's been shut down pretty much altogether, but it's not going to stop Peros from trying. That is, though, and it is going to send him down to the loser side of the bracket. All right, here we go. Really good buttons. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you're getting a second shot, right? A second chance. Yeah. It's like, all right, well. All right, so Yashido was working here, but maybe not here. So what if I had a command grab? <laughs> you know. What if I could convert every combo into level one super, which gave me the best OP in the game? Yeah, you know. Like, they were blocking a lot, so. All right, I got something for that. <laughs> all right, chasing up to the skies. Saw Shadow X was just a little too hop happy. Nice Right, and that harassment, that pressure with the jump C, jump D. Good patience there from uh, Shadow X. You know, seeing the opportunity with the DP. Oh, here we go. Uh, 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 uh. Guys, to call me Bowie, Mr. Bowie, coming through with the 46 months. I see you, homie. Hope I get to see you at uh, Frosty if you're going. If not, I'll see you at TNS. Right now, I would just want to see just how far this K-Dash can go because Shadow X immediately turned things around there. You thought that the Yashido was going to stay on the corner pressure forever. All right, able to block the cross-up. Right, so I'm glad we made the switch back to K-Dash, right? I understand why you would pick Ryo, but K-Dash, <laughs> it, it feels wrong. It feels wrong to see Shadow X play any other characters. I had never seen so much uproar. Yeah. Character choice, like it was crazy. Like the, the crowd was just in disbelief. I was in disbelief too. I didn't even realize it until the character was on screen fighting. <laughs> oh, but there we go. The suck. The big suck. Just like Max Power said, we are tied up now with our middle characters here. But Reno is coming in with a meter advantage. A few extra EX moves. It's always the Iori player, I swear. Yeah, they're they're really on point with those DPs. Alright, trying to get the other flinch here. Yeah, and that's good stuff there on uh, Reno. You know, you see him just pushing a lot of jab and, and moves. You know, to the layman it might look like they're just throwing out buttons, but really they're just trying to maintain that position, right? Because Hyder is a charge character, so you kind of have to put yourself in positions to where you can actually buffer the charge or you do uh, charge partitioning as the uh, the old school uh, term is going, right? So that's constantly leaving you in that opportunity to take advantage of those tools, right? The fireball, which is a charge. The DP, which is a charge. Because everything Hyder does is committal. Like, it requires constant commitment. So Yeah. And, of course, while you're charging, you don't want to just sit down there and hold down back and let your opponent rush in, right? That, that, those, yeah. those two A's you're seeing, they're a wall. A wall to prevent your opponent from engaging with you. Uh-oh, but here we go. Gets the EX tackle thanks to the air hit. Yep, the Clark special. Gets out of the way to command grab, but jump back, so no punish. Oh, nice. Just a standing A. Recognize the counter hit. Went for the EX tackle again. Goes for the Oki option with the elbow drop. All right, here we go. That wall. All right, here we go. Clark's in the zone. And now down to the big boys here. A couple of hosses ready to toss each other around. Yeah, Randy Orton facing off against Clark Cena. <laughs> Orochi Orton. <laughs> oh, here no. we go. Quick max. We have three bars. Oh, oh, this is going to really hurt. This is going to suck. <laughs> just, just get it over with. Yeah, just get it over with. Just do it. <laughs> You're 
are alive. You're at you're at ten percent or less. I want to say five. Oh wait okay. a minute. No, like okay, like fifteen. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, chat. He probably could have done level one, level two, level three. <laughs> Either way, he is going to come out on top in game number one. <laughs> like, I, I genuinely was thinking that, too. I'm like, wait a minute, you have more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Am I wrong? He could have done level one, level two, level three, and I'm pretty sure that would have killed. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Well, I don't know, right? Because um, the scaling, that's right. There is actually, well, level one feels like it has no scaling on it at all. Well, not even that, but remember, supers drain the uh, the maximo meter too. So they do. They, they right. had a little bit more, over. but it, yeah, I don't know. Mm. It was smart just to go for level two, level three, right? That was the most damage you could get guaranteed. Oh, he can't advance kits? Oh, uh, he can't cancel the one level weakness. Level the one weakness. Right. <laughs> right. How did I how did I let that slip my mind? Sorry, That's crazy. The one weakness. Thank you, you both. <laughs> See, he's not even that good. He can't even advance cancel. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I forgot that slipped my mind. That's why his level one is so good. Oh, almost. Oh, here we go. Part two. And at first, you don't succeed. Try again. Tornado. There it is. Yeah, can't advance cancel. Bottom five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that is one Yashiro down real quick there from Shadow X. Yeah. Waking up here in game number two. All right, here we go. And you know, it's, can you even call it a changing of the guard, right? Because again, like literally every, what, just about every player that's been in the top eight has been in the top three. Oh, pretty much at this point. Yeah, right? like it's, it's, <laughs> they're very much just kind of cycling on the throne at this point. It feels yeah. like there's a DP coming out from Shadow X. Chases down the back roll with the two C. Goes for EX slide. The smoke and sexy style combo here catches low. Oh. That was good. I like that. I think air to air conversions might be one of my favorite things of watching KOF because. It's, it requires a, a very much a heightened level of awareness to, to catch that because you don't have much time to get those. Yeah, and a lot of them re rely on those counter hits too. Mm -hmm. So having the wherewithal to, to recognize those kinds of scenarios. Oh my gosh. So when I first started playing KOF, um, the first match I played on an arcade, and I always, I always remember this because this is at CEO time. You know, hanging out in the arcade. Side. The guy was playing Orochi Yashiro, and he would just do that grab to me all day because I didn't know it was a command grab. <laughs> so he's just flipping over on my head, and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> like, I don't understand. And now seeing it happen to other people, I'm like, okay, that move is just, that move is just kind of cheap. <laughs> Tell you one thing we're seeing right now, though. Shadow X making that comeback. K Dash putting in the work with the OCV. The OKV. The OKV. Shadow waking up there. That might have been the strongest. Uh, yeah, that probably might be Shadow's strongest game uh, for the night. Nothing will stop this but show. This, again, on the other side. This is also a person that you want to be careful around when you wake them up, right? Because when Reno wakes up with that Orochi Yashiro or that Hydern, because both play both characters have been just back and forth, just knocking out cats left and right all night. So definitely gonna see what happens here at this point. Remember, folks, this is loser semis, not losers finals. This is last game. Ready? Absolutely. <laughs> Loser ain't gotta go home, they gotta go to bed. How's that for stakes? Oh, good bait there with the safe jump. Get some conversion, give me some more of that health. Toss you back towards the corner. Oh, oh the punish there on the fireball nice. attempt. And again, folks, this is what we were talking about. Now Reno's awake. I see your OCV. And I raise you. Round right, start situation. Tries to go for a neutral hop there. Sticks out a JB to put something out and prevent a jumping. But, man, 
Reno is so quick at just changing the pace just like that, right? Went aggressive at round start, backed up immediately, dropped fireballs, and then rushed right back in again. And Reno is just doing a great job of picking Shadow apart at this moment. Like, even there, right, sniffing out the back row. Like, right now, Reno is just, just feeling it. Oh, my gosh! No help loss yet! Mm, yep, there we go. That was perfect. Wow. And that one is a true perfect, a true Chat. perfect coming out for Reno. Jobber. There's no way we had a perfect tonight. There's no way in a game this this explosive, in a game this this chaotic, we had a perfect. Reno, you madman. And Reno gonna get the punish here again. Yes, but Clark without L. <laughs> okay, that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> oh my God, I'm sorry. I had to push that out. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Is the challenge C just kind of stealing turns back, even with something like a standing B? Nice DP from Shadow X, but we need to get something more substantial started. Five bars on deck means that you can kill Hydern if you can touch him. It's got to be the right one. It's got to be the right kind of touch. All right, create a little bit of space. Don't need to overextend. There's the taco. Hydern's down. All right, here we go. Signs of life, Shadow X managing to do it and still maintain the bar as well. They could very much make, they could very much do this. They can try to even this up. Yeah, you're right, it is completely doable. All right, here we go. Now Reno's on the on the prowl, gets the opening, and that's. Here's the advance cancel, so there you go. You want to know the difference between Yashiro and Orochi Yashiro? <laughs> there you go. One can advance cancel, the other can. <laughs> yeah, but that's going to push Reno into loser's finals, K-Fan. But right now, it is time to focus on this match right here, our loser's finals. Three out of five the rest of the night. It's time for Orochi Yashiro versus Shune. Let's get it. Right, anime versus legacy. Who shakes out here? Protagonist privilege for the power of the elements. Right, here we go. And Reno opted to go with the uh, Roshi Yashiro on the point here. It's an interesting choice for sure. You can kind of see it right because uh, Orochi Yashiro has multiple anti-air options that can lead to big damage with the 2C and the anti-air command grab as well. All right, getting the health lead here. Blocks the cross up. This is essentially where Yashiro becomes his most dangerous. Right? When he can pretty much control the pace utilizing that 5B jump D. Forcing you to push the issue here, but Peros is lag. Peros sin lag. Doing a great job here. Fighting through the storm. But now we have the other side of the coin. Oh, good catch there. Oh, Shatter Strike catching the jump. Beto. Building up that extra credit right now. All right, jumping right on in. Oh, wow. Was even able to take the corner on top of that. And Reno just locking down Shune. Here we go. Leona coming on in. This is the one character that Pero will not give up. And rightfully so, right? Because, you know, Pero has already proven that they can get it done with this character. It's not, you know, it's not a complete loss, you know, putting this character no. on the screen, regardless of the tier. Oh, it's just extra effort. That's the thing. She takes a lot of effort to get cooking. All right, nice work. Still, it's just neither player able to open each other up. The stray hits barely connecting as well. Yeah, right now, you know, the 
stakes are higher than ever, and both players are hungry for that grand final spot. Level one, there it is. Not enough. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> but something but didn't know. I didn't know what to do. You gotta watch out though. This is five bar hider coming in on the anchor position. All right, and it's a family feud as we get on with the lat with the uh, Leona versus Hydern here. Oh, that's unfortunate. Still has three bars to work with. Oh, I'll put up meter. Why not? <laughs> you know. Kind of like the mini Mario stretchy, right? All right, I'll just keep throwing out this knee. <laughs> yeah, find out the earring. Earring is able to hit that time. Chases down, gets the low. There's the shatter strike. Here we go. Going for a ride. Blocks the mix up. Look, all that effort, all that meter for very little damage and just a mix up. That's what I'm talking about. But it looks so good. Oh. These cross-ups have been exceptionally dangerous tonight. Huh? That was so smart. That was so smart from Reno. The Hydern player in me is very pleased. <laughs> the Hydern hater in me isn't. <laughs> Just like a Clark player hating on his owner. <laughs> Speaking of his owners, here comes Whip. Yep. Both these characters may be zoners, but they can still get in and mix you up with the best of them. Yeah, it looks like the Orochi Blood got us here, but it looks like the uh, Ikari Squad is going to wrap things up. That's right. The quick max confirm. And the level three. I'm actually curious. Not enough. Wow. Oh, got caught. Don't let it happen to you. Pero. Five bars. Pero, Four don't let half. it happen to you. No, they got help. Cross they up. Take a hit. Oh, oh, the empty cross up for the throw. Pero was ready for it. Cannot throw a fireball. You did it anyway. Wow. I just said it. <laughs> I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry. I just knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I'm like, he going to throw a fireball. He don't know what else to do. <laughs> Reflect immediate into the chase down. <laughs> I knew it. I'm just like, but, like, please don't do it. I know you want to do it. I would do it too, but you can't. You just can't. I'm sorry, chat. I just knew it was coming. I played his character. <laughs> okay. I've been playing Hyder. Like, Hyder was the part, one of the first characters that I learned when I played this game. I'm sorry. I just know, okay? I was just like, please don't do it. I know you're going to do it, but don't. <laughs> Here we go. It's back to that Orochi Yashiro versus the Yo, Shunei. The jump. Hey. Oh, my God. Oh. 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 Spiked into the corner. What a challenge. My man was mashing. He saw that overhead coming. He said, God help me. Jesus, take the wheel. And you know, that was kind of messed up there, that situation, because Pedro essentially didn't even do anything, right? They just jumped in, no air dash, no nothing. And that just speaks to the level of conditioning that they established in this game. Mm, for sure. Well. And no, you're alive. Oh. You got no, no way. Yo, they got hit by that. Wow, that's crazy. That wasn't even a combo. It was just raw. I mean, I'm sure it was supposed to be a combo, but it's just a fact. Oh, my goodness. All right. Trying to chase down. And there we go. Junae done. Time to bring Leona in. And again, it's just so back and forth between these two. Trading character after character. Yeah, I know. These matches, I'm telling y'all. Listen. Y'all already know. Y'all been here before. What am I doing? Oh, from downtown. 
into the corner. Yes, sir. Pedal not not discouraged. Not at all. Able to score the throw. Oh, run up, stare into his eyes for a bit before pressing buttons. Yeah, this is where it starts to get really dangerous, right? Both of you are aware of just how bad it can get if you give him a clean hit. So now you want to wait a little bit, right? Now you're not so you're not so sure. That was a beautiful throw into the dash punch attempt, though. Hopping on in. Does get caught this time. Quick max. Not going to be able to kill off this, but we do get a setup, which could lead to death. Oh, no. We're just going to cash out in this one. I mean, that's respectable, too, right? To just cash out. But now yeah, it means you'll you have meter defensive. Not to mention, you know, the last few times they've been going for the mix-up, it hasn't really worked out in their favor. So they figure, you know, get the damage now. We're about to mix up later. Oh. And we're still able to close up the round. That is what matters the most here. Pero now trying to get that two-up lead on Reno. That's going to be so valuable if we can get there. Oh, yeah, for sure, because Reno is definitely a player. Like, for as strong as they are, once you get the momentum, if you're able to establish yourself on the scoreboard, it definitely makes the job harder. Probably one of the uh, few times that oh. Reno has a bit of a disadvantage, you know, when it comes to coming back from those deficits. Yep, BD Fireball going to blow you up with a chip damage range. That was so tragic that we unfortunately did not get to confirm into the Shatter Strike that we wanted, right? Uh, just miss input, delayed it a little too long, something. But losing that meter and losing Leona is huge. Final round. Ready? Go. All right, here we go. Four and a half bars. Pretty much hiding the world at this moment. However, Pero... Not giving Reno the hit they want. Not giving them the situation that they're looking for. Oh, good catch. Another one. All right. Reno on the hunt. Run up DP. Chasing it down. And that's good on Reno, right? Understanding that Pedos is trying to uh, do their best to stay mobile. And they're taking every opportunity to shut that mobility down. As you can see here, Pedro being a lot more conservative with the jumps, right? Last game, they were a lot more frequent, a lot more, you know, liberal with the jumps. But Reno, playing those key hits with, with, the, with the DP, has now effectively discouraged Pedro from taking to the sky too much. And now they're in control at this point. 18 yeah. seconds left, and Reno has three bars. Yeah, Pedro needs to make something happen here. But that's wow. the that's the terrible thing is when you have to make an option happen, you're forced to move. It's uncomfortable. It makes you make mistakes. No. But there it is. The low. The quick oh, you you gotta go. be kidding me. <gasps> what a stellar fight. These two know. How Just like that, a 2-0 lead here this for Pedro. This is what I'm talking about. Everything's going just fine. You know, everything's fine. Like, you were just having a normal, you know, you're just doing your thing. You're just getting ready to transition. Like, all right, he's about to wrap this up. Gosh, the room just exploded. What's happening tonight? <laughs> Somebody explain it to me. Well, here we go. Reno needs to make a reverse 3-0 now in order to stay in this bracket and get a chance at victory. Round one. Ready? Go! Alright, let's see. Again, keeping the pressure up here on Chune. Back dash doesn't get caught. You saw Pedos try to go for that crouching A to catch it. Again, harassing with the crouching A. Oh, again, throwing the dash punch attempt. That is huge. Tries to go for the dash into the low this time. It's really when Shune's pressure gets started, that's when he gets scary. But you see, Reno is not afraid to utilize the guard point on that DP there to challenge it. 
Yeah, definitely, uh, you know, staying in the pocket and threading the needle, so to speak. Oh. Great job blocking that cross up. Overhead hits, and there we go. Pedro's able to get the first blood. And this is such a good start now. Reno, everything is slipping through his fingers right now like grains of sand. Anti-air. Already took down one. Yashiro, what's another? Oh, no! <laughs> the, the raw max. That is absolutely not what Reno wanted. You see Pero running away to let all that meter just vanish. Flush down the drain. So smart. And now we go on in to put the pressure on. Oh my gosh. That no, that was that's planned. Okay, so that's intentional. Wow. Okay. Good on Pedro. Ashing him with it. We saw that a little bit of that last week as well. Uh oh. Scary trade. Every trade is gonna be in Pedro's favor. Gets picked up with the EX scoop. And Shune's gone, but man, he did what he needed to. Plenty of work. All right, here we go. That jumpy, that Player two has victory in their sights. All right, you heard it, folks. Stand your ground. Ready? Beto. Looking to uh, get a big win here with the 3-0. Sitting on set point. Yeah, love. There we go. EX run through. Again, you're not allowed to just sit there. Not building up your spirit bomb for free, all right? All right, we saw a lot of this last game, right? Reno taking those advantages, taking those hits where they can. That could have been a combo there. Oh, trying to get a cross up. Oh, and there you have it. Gets over to Fireball. Yeah. All right, what's for breakfast? Tries to go for the overhead there. Not quite going to work. Again, with the jump in, Reno was able to recover in time. It's still up against the ropes. Sent right back in. He's reeling. There we go. Shadow Strike, but can we squeeze out the kill? Yeah. Oh. Just and it looks enough. So good. I know what you want, and you're not going to get it. There's one player to the other. Yeah, Hydran's going to look to slow this match down, right? Isla is so good at snowballing. We've seen it time and time again. But we've also yeah. seen that she's pretty good at utilizing her air mobility to avoid those flash kicks. Yeah, you know, definitely trying to change up those angles and not make it easy for uh, Beto to get those uh, anti-air opportunities. And also switching it up there, going with the grab. Oh, smart stuff there. Didn't go for the double jump. Oh, but here we go. Big reversal. Gets the jump in. Finger guns into the suck. Toss you right back into the corner. We've dropped that a few times tonight, but we get it this time. That was a dangerous scenario, right? Went for the uh, the, the, five, the close 5C five there. And could have very easily got blown up for it. Oh, no. <laughs> it's just going to get blown up here instead. Went for the jump B instead of the jump C there and paid for it. I'm sorry, jump D. Jump B actually might have worked. Is that cross up too? <laughs> All right, let's see what happens here now that I can match your air mobility. See how you like it when somebody jumps all over you. Oh, there's the DP. Just catching out of the sky. Gets just a casual walk-up throw. And now Shune stuck in the corner here. This is not a good place to be. Use uh, that double jump there. Keep oh. the pressure up. Like a super drop kick too. Fades out the DP. Oh my god, Dark Angel is just absolutely running wild at the moment. Yeah, all you needed was just one clean hit. And now, after losing almost all of it, 
Beto finally manages to land one. <laughs> and you know, Dark Angel is not concerned about that, right? Rio, again, Rio dishes out so much damage. A regular confirm here is going to put Shune down. Yeah, Shune. Trying to find a way in there, but Dark Angel doing a great job of using that uh, meter proactively. Yep, I already and know I have the lead. Yeah, I already know I have the lead, and I know I'm going to get the resources back, so might as well close out best as I can. And now, here we go. Rio versus Leona. Leona sitting on a lot of money here, a full wallet, and now is looking to spend. It's time for a shopping spree. Goes for the cross up, but it's not gonna connect. Oh. Nice. Good block. Oh, nice dash block there. Still gonna get caught though, and all this damage is adding up and sticking. Benny Maru is still waiting in the wings, even if Pedro is able to take down this Rio. Which is looking less and less likely as this set goes on. Oh, guard break. break, but Fireball couldn't capitalize. And closing out the final character the same week we closed out the second character with the Fireball chip damage. Dark Angel taking the first game here of Grand Finals. All right. All right. Dark Angel taking a little bit of a breather, it looks like. Oh, no, it's Peros. Excuse me. Going back to member select. Select member. And I like this, right? Slow it down a little bit. Time to bring in the girl, Sylvie. Select order. No, it's instead bringing in Kim. I like it. I want to see it. I want to see it. Okay, Kim. Titans. Kim. I want to see it. Shune. Interesting. I want to see it. I love me some Kim. I just love his design. That's, uh, listen, it's just, it just does something to me, all right? I just I need to see more of it. Ready? What does he know? <laughs> I can care less what they know. I just want to, I just, I need to look cool. That's all. <laughs> well, let's hope he can get something going here. Right now, getting the first hit. The first substantial hit, at least, here in game number two. Oh, oh, my goodness, and what a chase down. That was an amazing choice there from Dark Angel. Understanding that Pedro is going to try to get away there. And also taking advantage of Hyder's floatiness. And just after a couple nice mix-up opportunities, puts Pero in a situation where just the hop-in dropkick is going to be enough to get rid of Hydern. Giving Dark Angel another substantial lead. Let's see what Kim is going to do. This is the character we swap for. Got rid of Shune for this Kim. Is he going to be enough? You know what? What if... What if, like, they anti-air with the level one, right? Kim got that level one, the, the launching kick or whatever. I wonder. I don't know. Why I, don't, I don't, uh, I haven't, I never, like, actually, like, lab that mark. Oh, my. I, feel like like, I don't know if that, if that super has any invincibility on it, so. Uh, most level ones usually don't, and I feel like it'd be risky to try to go for that, too, you know? But we are going to get the air level one there, which is going to knock out Isla. So, so far, Kim, not a bad pick. Yeah, in front, I definitely get a pajama vibe from this particular uh, design of Kim's uh, outfit as well. It feels more like pajamas than fighting gear. All right, double DP. Oh my God, kick you right in the shins. You're dead. Well, <laughs> yeah, spend the level one for sure. Don't give him any opportunity to mount a comeback here. If Dark Angel can get this 2-0 lead on top of Pero, no one's been able to make a reverse 3-0 yet so far tonight. And having to make a reverse 3-0 just to reset the bracket is... That is that a, a mental order. toll. <laughs> yeah. With Leona. Oh, oh, wait a minute. But you know, that's how it starts. Respectful damage. 
meaty pressure on top of that with the Oki, but we're going to DP right out of it. It was Mashy DP in that block stun for any gap. Too high. All right, here we go. Empty jump throw. Snowball no, is stop, rolling. bro. The snowball is moving. No. It's growing. You're dead. It's getting larger. Yeah, you're dead. And the snowball turns into a full-on avalanche. Dark Angel up two games to zero. Looking to close things out here in a very quick fashion. Dark Angel said, I got stuff to do. I'm ready to go. It's 11 p.m. Eastern Look, Standard Time. It's time. An avalanche is correct, Jackal. But now it is time for Pero to dig himself out of the snow, right? Needs to find a way back up to see the sunlight here, but it's pretty deep down. 2-0 down, in fact. All right, here we go. Look at that guard gauge. Oh there it God. is. Right. Yeah, it wasn't much you could do in that case because you didn't have the meter yet. Kind of just had to deal. Oh, he's now. Absolutely snowballing. All right. Just further getting buried. Dark Angel looking to run away with things here, and it's shaping up to be that, but we're going to see what Pedal can do here. Kim in action. Hold up. Can. If... If Dark Angel actually wins this, that means tonight he will have 6 0 Pedro. Yeah, that's actually kind of crazy. All right, score the DP. And it's such, and it's such a disappointment, too, because, like, Pedro just sat there and just uh, 3 0 Reno <laughs> to get here. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, Dark Angel is probably the most consistent, dominant player here in DNS at the moment, but does get spiked back down to the ground. This Kim versus Isla matchup hasn't been too terrible so far. Yeah, you know, and, and it just comes down to those angles, right? Finding a character that's able to challenge those sweet spots that you know that the opponent wants to hit. And Isla, right, is constantly looking for that, right? That, that up close, short hop range. The Kim really add up the stuff in that, especially with the DP, right? Yeah, looking pretty good here so far. Ready? This is where things started to get out of hand. Yeah, it, it's the, the amount, it seems like Dark Angel always has meter, right? Always has so much meter on these characters. And uh, these characters are known for dumping meter, too, especially Rio. Yeah, for sure. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Yo, get the... Get Bro. out of here. <laughs> Ain't no way, dog. <laughs> the commitment. He said, I'm going to run up DP, and I'm just Yo, to Yo, time out, time out. What? <laughs> The, the one hit confirms and the faith, the faith that KOF players have in their DPs, that their DPs are going to hit so they can cancel into super is honestly yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, that was, that was nuts, yo. The DP one hit confirmed into level two. <laughs> it, it neutral, mind you. Like, that, that was crazy. Yeah, Dark Angel is definitely trying to get this done. Dark Angel is hitting the red button. Dark Angel is hitting the red button, Chad. Dark Angel said, wrap this up, B. Wrap it up. Yeah. He's looking to wrap it up right now. Is able to actually parry the earring as well. Doesn't get punished from the swipe. Three bars. Three and a half bars still left on Pedro's side. But, I mean, you can't afford to get hit. You can't afford yeah, to get hit. All. And Dark Angel is not making any any concessions here not overextending but he's gonna be able to get clipped here by a 2b yeah you had to you gotta cash out can't really afford to go for anything funky nice with the anti-air you gotta wait a keep real locked down wait a minute wait a minute shadow strike connects okay. all right still alive 16 seconds yeah you, you don't get much yeah, not much at all. This is still, uh, you know, in Benny Maru's ballpark here. One confirm is all it's going to take. One hit into a level one. DP after, you're gone. Oh. And Benny Maru is a lot better at neutral than Rio. <laughs> so. Like, I have projectiles. <laughs> yeah, all these back dashes. Ooh, that was so scary. Okay, okay. 
this is actually okay because you just made him waste meter. It is, but he still has another EX left. Goes for the EX DP, and there it is. Dark Angel 6-0 over Pero Sin Lag, your TNS number 85 champion.